Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Encounter Roleplay. My name is Will. I'm a DD sex icon, and we're here today for our first ever session of Judge Dread Assault on Justice. And I have some fellow judges with me here today to begin our adventure. Uh, we'll be starting off with a bit of a session zero. We may get to our first seat today as well, time permitting. So let's start off by uh, meeting who we are today. And then we'll go around in a minute and we'll talk about who our characters are and then get into you know, all our normal session zero stuff that we like to do here on Account of Roleplay. Let's start with Mr. John from Pruitt of WebDM fame. Pruitt, how's it going, my friend? <laughs> Well, Will, I hope everybody's okay uh, out there. I'm doing just fine. Like you said, I'm Pruitt, and I'll be playing Judge Kane, who has aspirations to work in uh, the special judicial uh, district. He wants to be a, a judge that seeks out corruption and other crooked judges. Because while we may be the law, we are not above the law. Here, here. Amen. Uh, fantastic. We have Callum with us today. Callum, how's it going, my friend? Going well, the streets are safe thanks to the work of Judge Fair, who likes to uh, make his name speak for itself. Of course, any judge is fair in his judgment, or could it be uh, otherwise? Dun dun dun! <laughs> Love it. Uh, Susie, how are you doing today? Oh, hi, Will. I'm very good, thank you. How are you doing today? I am hot right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I more. give all three of you about five minutes before those come <laughs> off. Um, but yeah, I am playing Judge Sarah Judy, who is going to be Judge Judy and Executioner on the streets of Mega City One. I think um, we're Judge Judgy. We changed it. <laughs> I did misspell <laughs> Susie's name at the beginning, and it was Judge Judgy for a while. That would have been a bit on the nose. Um, <laughs> no bad. Just, just. It's okay. Name changes can happen. Um, let's see. Shauna, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. Can't wait to get into this. But yeah, I'm playing Judge Fremont. Side Judge, you can't escape the law, not even in your own mind. Dun, dun, dun. The four police. My lord. Yes. Uh, fantastic. And we have Tahina with us today. How are you, my friend? I'm doing fine. <laughs> I'm very exciting to, excited to play. And I'm going to play uh, Mad Judge, Judge Lawrence, because corruption and crime is just another tumor and disease to be treated. <laughs> Ooh. Nice. <laughs> Some good opening lines from our judges today. So, um, yeah, as I mentioned, this will be our session zero. So we're going to be learning about our characters. We're going to be learning about Mega City One. We're going to be learning about how they work together, their uh, their relationships to one another, and their relationships to the most important thing in this world, the law. Um, so before we get started, though, I'll run for a couple of things, which are sponsors. The first of which I remind you today is that we are, of course, sponsored here today by Ian Publishing, who are the creators of Judge Dredd and the Worlds of 2000 AD, uh, which you can go and check out on their websites or via Drive for RPG or RPG Now. It's also available there. You can get a quick start PDF for free if you want to go and read through while we're playing now. Um, it's a D6 pool-based system, which we'll be explaining more as we go. It's pretty simple, but it's got a lot of depth to it as well uh, when it comes to the combats, which we are most certainly getting are going to be getting into when we are destroying some perps and perhaps even some robots as well because we'll be playing through one of the robot wars adventures um today which is also available uh for sale as well so um stay tuned to learn more about the system as we go um but there is that and of course we'll be playing on fancygrounds.com i've got some maps some tokens ready as well um which are available there the demo version of fancy grounds is free for download you can go to their website fancygrounds.com to get that or via steam as well Wheelinggames.co.uk is a go-to destination for tabletop board games, war games, and more, up to 20% off the retail value. And of course, last but not least, if you have yet to retweet this fair tweet, then go ahead and do so, because you will be judged if you do not, my friends. Um, when we hit 20 retweets, our sponsor's tabletop loot will give away a set of dice to one of you lucky folks there in the chat, as long as you're not a pub. Uh, and of course, you can donate to affect the game as well by giving players nat 1s, nat 20s, wild magic surges, and oh, so much worse. 
us, and I see that Charlie has already made a donation, which I'll go and check out here in just a moment to see if it's a, a fair wind blows and a wind of chaos for our judges or not. Um, but that's that for today. Let's get started with our session zero of Assault on Justice. And I want to go around and learn a little bit more about your characters, so we'll be asking you a couple of questions. Um, we'll be uh, we'll be learning a bit as well, and we'll ask you to make some uh, some roles here in a minute as well to play uh, our character relationship game as we figure out what our bonds, our flaws are, etc., etc. So let's start by just going around the table real quick, and uh, maybe there's a quick description of your characters you can give us. Uh, maybe you could just tell us a little more about them and their relationship with the law. How did they? Uh, what do they feel about the law? Um, how are they? How are they most effective when it comes to combat uh, and executing justice, etc.? So uh, let's start with uh, Judge Kane, our street judge. Bro, tell us more about Mr. Kane. Well, uh, first off, I'm going to take this helmet off because I'm about to pass the fuck out. Um, <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> that's how long it lasted. Well, turn the AC down next time. Um, Judge Kane, other or his full name, Judge Roderick Kane. Um, um, he was born uh, to very religious, very strict parents, and uh, he has he has not rebelled against that. He is in in fact he has accepted it, and he understands his place in this world. Um, and his place is to uphold that law uh, to its fullest. And he um, maybe had a run in with a with a crooked judge uh, in his youth and so he saw his chance and that chance is to root out that corruption and pull it root and stem uh, yeah and so that's that's kind of his that's kind of his deal he's pretty straight laced a um, uh, bit of a bit of a, a bit of a boy scout maybe um, and he doesn't see much flexibility in uh, breaking the law on either side of it whether you're a judge or a perp so he holds all accountable to the law I like it. I like it. Cool. Um, I'm making notes as we go here, so don't mind me. Uh, let's see. Uh, Judge Fair, talk to us more about yourself. How did you uh, come into this uh, this line of work? I think like many judges, uh, Judge Fair was a, an orphan, so he went through the social system of uh, Mega City One, and uh, that allows him to, uh, <clears throat> to join the system uh, to be a judge. So he's got strong uh, supporting beliefs regarding or uh, working the system is or appropriate it is. So his uh, moniker and reputation of being fair, it's not so much that he's more than not, uh, that he sympathizes with the perps, but it's more that uh, he will make sure asking questions about uh, reporting relatives reporting uh, accomplices and making sure that everyone ends up where they should be ending up. So if a perp's got a, a child, a uh, dependent, uh, a husband or a wife, uh, making sure that they end up where the system is supposed to have them so they can be reformed and uh, helped in the appropriate ways of Mega City One. Fantastic. Love it. Awesome. Uh, what then of Judge Judy? Uh, <laughs> can tell us more about her Mega City One primetime uh, or daytime TV show um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and everything that goes into that. Well, Judge Judy actually grew up on the wrong side of the law. She was this close to becoming a perp herself, but she had a brush with some judges that sat her on the straight and narrow as a youth and she threw herself into becoming a judge. However, she does have quite the flair for the dramatic. She's quite a flamboyant judge, and she does like mm. to make her a presence known as she's cruising down the street on her Lawbringer. Um, <clears throat> she is, uh, she's quite the, the presence in Mega City One. It, would you say, and is she famous in, in some way around here? Is she known to be other judges as, a, as having some kind of reputation, or is she yeah. a newer? Yeah, she's known for being a hard ass. She's quite famous for um, for being one of the the tougher judges to come across. She's notorious, I would say. Hmm, notorious. I like that. Cool. Um, then, Shauna, tell us more about uh, Judge Fremont. 
Oh, Judge Freeman was found as a child. Similar way of being in an orphanage. Found out she was talented with, uh, psychically, was raised in the uh, Psych Academy, is, and grew up to be, have a huge amount of devotion for it, bordering on zealotry. Mm. She also goes by this, the idea that the work, the law works better if people are afraid of you. And what are people afraid of more than people that can read your mind? Absolutely. Does she employ those abilities on her fellow judges, or is she would she be willing to, perhaps? Time to time. You have to know who to mm. depend on. Absolutely. Cool, cool. We'll be back for more in a moment. But uh, Judge Lawrence, tell us more about yourself and your relationship with the law. Well, um, Judge Lawrence's parents have been were one of the few um, lucky citizens that have been saved by famous judges from uh, perps. So they decided to put her into the academy so she would become one day one of those great judges saving the city, uh, Mega City One. Um, she always wanted to be a street judge, but during the curriculum it showed that she was very intelligent and everyone tried to push her in a more, uh, yeah, laboratory studying career mm -hmm. but she um pushed her way through and now she finally gets to be on the street with all the other judges she's always very stone-faced and trying to hide that she's in a on the inside is going like <laughs> <I'm out here. laughs> i don't have to do shit don't have to study all day i can actually do something so yeah that's judge lawrence <laughs> <laughs> cool. So she, she she pretends that she's like the others in that sort of very dour yeah. way, but in reality she's a bit more excitable. So pen girl. She has a scrapbook Ratched. with all kinds of reports and files of famous judges that she collected, and she's like, <sighs> I'm cool. She collects the comics, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yes. Uh, <laughs> cool, cool. Um, so now we know a little bit about our, um, our, our judges um, on the... On the surface, at least. But let's let's dig a little bit deeper and let's play the first Will Jones patented uh, Session Zero uh, role-playing games, which is I don't know what you call it. Uh, <laughs> the character relationship wheel of fortune. Da -da 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 -da. Um, play the sound effect in post. So uh, I would like to start by first of all, roll me a d6 and then roll me a d10. So uh, Pruitt. If you would be so kind as to start, um, first of all, roll me a d6, and then roll me a d10, and we'll see what happens, and then we'll build some connections, and you guys will have some input on uh, what's happening there. All right. Two and a nine. Two and a nine. All righty. So this is a uh, relationship that you have. Okay, so you have traveled somewhere together with one of your other judges. Who is that judge, and where did you travel? Uh, one, two, three, four. It was. It was Judge Judy. Okay. So I rolled a two. So that was, um, it was Judge Judy, and uh, I, I, I think we went to the People's Court to see Judge Wapner about something, but I don't know. Maybe it was attacked by mutants or gang members, um, and uh, everybody was lost. That's just off the top of my okay. head. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Um, feel free to, to to let that percolate. But more ideas as we as we go on here, we'll just we'll we'll put in the uh, the basis for it, and then we'll fill in some blanks as we go. Okay, Judge Fair, run me a D six, and run me a D ten. What could go wrong? The you one four and one eight. Okay, four and an eight. So, just fair. Oh, okay. You are f you are family friends with one of the other judges. So um, maybe you're. F well, actually, I guess. Sorry, what? Uh oh. Oh, frozen. My back. Yeah, I was saying maybe it makes more sense if you're from an orphanage that um, you are friends with one of the other orphans. So maybe Judge 
Fremont or uh, I think Kane is also an orphan. Um, yeah, no, so no, my, uh, nope. yeah, my parents are still alive. Okay, cool. I think uh, I put uh, Judge Freeman's uh, uh, father into uh, gave him uh, 18 years in ISO cube. Oh boy! <laughs> I will I will scratch out friends. So you put Judge Freeman's father. Oh no! He in. thinks it was a good thing for him. I mean, he, he uh, yeah. He's following a much better path now, thanks to me. He needed those wow. eighteen years. <laughs> he needed those eighteen years. Judge Fruman, how do you how do you feel about this? Uh, is that justice for you, or is that um, something that there is friction about? Oh, you're muted. I would just say that you know, you break the law, you have to serve it. If not, I might not be. Where I am today, so no hard feelings. Okay, okay. Uh, no hard feelings about that one. <laughs> Seems good. Um, let's see, Judge Judy, roll me a d6 and roll me a d10, please. All right, we got a six on the six. Oh, boy. and an eight on the ten. Okay. Ooh, okay, so this will be separate from your one with Kane, but just sort of fit a little bit. You happen to be in the same place and in trouble at the same time as one of your other judges. Ooh, okay, I think that uh, maybe on one of Judge Lawrence's first time out on the street, we got overwhelmed by pups, and it was a risky mm -hmm. sort of an almost fatal excursion for us, but we managed to get out all right. Sounds Ooh. great. Yeah, was it maybe Judge Lawrence's like first, you know, day out on the streets and uh, yeah. almost oh, overwhelmed yeah. and yeah, I like that. Cool. So you cool. know what that means, right? You're in a scrapbook now. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so is maybe, uh, yeah, maybe Judge Judy is your sort of is your idol after she saved you because she's famous mm -hmm. as well, right? Yeah. yeah, she has a reputation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As she's not a pushover, so I'm trying to. Yeah, I'm <laughs> following her footsteps. Oh, Dope. Judge Lawrence must be protected at all costs. Oh. At all costs. <laughs> 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 okay, uh, Judge Fruon, roll me a uh, d6 or d10. All right, three and a six. Three and a six. Uh, you, okay, you are neighbors with one of the other judges. <laughs> Who lives next door to Judge Fremont? Um, you know what? Let's, um, Judy. Maybe similar quarters. Maybe Judge Block or something like that. That's where everybody lives. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who lives next door to Judge Judy? Uh, yeah, in the Judge Block. I like that. Definitely have your own quarters where you guys <laughs> are. You happy neighbors, um, or are you the kind of neighbors that always get one another's nerves? Um, I would say one-sided. It gets on Fremont's nerves because she can pick up a lot of thoughts, excess thoughts, and it's hard sometimes. Mm. You come home. I think Judy's a shitty neighbor too. Like mm -hmm. she's just the worst. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes. Cool. Judy is a shitty neighbor. It's going in the notes, folks. Uh, <laughs> it's canon. Uh, fantastic. Then okay. Judge Lawrence. Uh, last but not least, from a D6, from a D10. I will do so. Uh, six on the D6 and a 10 on the D10. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Up. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, okay, you are witnesses to a crime or an assassination with one other judge here. Hmm. There are a lot of connections with Judge Judy already, so I'm I think I'm taking Judge Fair. And that's let it be Ooh. an assassination. Nice. Bye. 
like that. You witness an assassination with Judge Fair. Did the assassin get away, or did you manage to um, apprehend the verb? Uh, we caught him because we are the law, and that's what we do. Nice. By Let's the say way, then that. Go ahead. Uh, by the way, uh, we gave eighteen years to uh, Judge Freeman's uh, father. Uh, that's a minimal sentence for murder. So maybe he was the assassin. Hey. <gasps> hey! Oh! <laughs> like Anti-government, like maybe. Anti-government, actually. Yeah. There's a minimal sentence, Ooh. so there, there should be someone... I, I guess it's in self-defense, or... I don't know. <laughs> could, have, could have been. I'll let the details, yeah. the exact details, be up to you guys. He um, was controlled by but... UFC. Ooh! Hmm. Oh, he had a weird disease that controlled his actions, so he was not quite himself. Which uh, is the only reason why we did not execute him on the spot, but we're like... There were... vegetating circumstances, and that's why he's got into the ice cube and not, and not executed. Right, right, yeah. He, he pled guilty and you saw fit to give him some... some leniency to the fact that there was some strange disease, which no doubt is of interest to um, to you, uh, mm -hmm. Judge Lawrence, yeah, what have you. That can be a, a lead for us to investigate further um, mm -hmm. in the actual adventure. Cool, cool. All right, let's go around once more. I've got a different one for this on part two of the role-playing game character relationship Wheel of Fortune. Da -da 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 -da. We'll add that in post. Uh, okay, so this time you're probably a d20. So, Judge Kane, give me a big old d20. Four. Four. You are protected by one of the other judges here, who's taken a special, uh, special eye to you, I guess, to try and uh, look after you. Who is that? Hmm. I'm gonna go with Judge Fair. Okay. Yes. And why does Judge Fair protect you? Um, cause we seem, uh, of similar minds about the law and that, you know, everyone should serve. Uh, and so maybe through, uh, interactions over the years, um, you know, we just kind of have come to know each other and, uh, you know, maybe I looked out for him on, on a case and vice versa. And it's, I'd like to think it's something that was a slow build, you know, just like one of those, like those work friends that, uh, you know, it's like you, all of a sudden you look up, you've been working for like eight, ten years together, and you just realize like, oh, yeah, they're always there for me. You know, it's not like any one big event. It's just kind of like we've just known each other for a long time. The others died. <laughs> well, they're all, they're all dead or we, or we put them in the cubes ourselves. So, you know, <laughs> it's like I'm pretty sure that he's not going to break the law, right? So I don't, right, I'm pretty right. sure I don't have to worry about him. Now, Judy, on the other hand, some crazy shit right there. <laughs> yeah, she's a really shitty neighbor. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Fremont tells me about it over coffee most mornings, so it's it's <laughs> become a habit. It's not in itself a crime, but it is perhaps an indicator that crimes may be committed. <laughs> well, I, I constantly uh, tell Fremont if she if she's being disorderly in public, you know the sentence. I mean, all you have to do is carry it out. Um, mm -hmm. so. <laughs> Gladly. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, judge Fair, uh, roll me the fairest d20 you can. d20. Oops. 17. The perfect number. You are indebted to one of the judges here. Uh, who are you indebted to and why? I'd like to be indebted to Judge Judy. I don't have any connections to her yet. Yeah. She's the last one of the five. So, Judge Judy, do you have any suggestion on how I could be indebted to you? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, maybe she was uh, some backup that you super needed. Like, you were so close to like getting iced. And, uh, you know, she saved you in an instance, and you feel like you owe her a debt for saving your life. Blood debt. 
Yep. Because surely Judge Farah is not a gambling man. Uh, so. <laughs> that, that Neither is Judy. <laughs> yeah, no one's proved it. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, she's a lone. She's actually a lone shark. A lone shark. <laughs> That's why she's a shame neighbor. She's got people coming in and out all day. <laughs> all the time. Brown paper parcels, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, Judge Judy, roll me that d20. Alright, let's go. That's a four. A four. Uh, let's re-roll that, because uh, we already had a four. Yeah. Trying to bite my spell. A seven. A seven. You are a childhood friend of one of the other judges. Uh, Freeman was an orphan, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, I think that um, Judy and, and Fremont were kind of friends. Judy was on the wrong side of the law, but mm -hmm. I feel like it was that kind of friendship where, you know, they're kind of different, but their differences make them friends. Yeah. That's cool. why. That's why the shitty neighbor part hasn't like escalated. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Used, like friends. she's used to it. Like she's used to. You guys are college anyone roommates. Else. You you if, went if to college anyone together. Else. <laughs> yeah, college. <laughs> you roommates. thought it was a great idea. <laughs> Turns out Judy is really shitty to live with, but you put up with it because you're all friends. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yes. Fantastic. Um. Okay. Uh. Fremont, roll me say uh, a d20 here. 12. 12. Oh, you are an acolyte of one of the other judges. So maybe you're like an understudy, you've studied with them, you've shadowed with them um, to help uh, teach you a thing or two about the law. Um, ah, I think Judge Kane, because Judge Kane has that um, focus in like inter judge judiciary stuff, and that's maybe a road she's going to go on, maybe. Ooh, yeah. Sort of the two of you in the internal affairs section of judging. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, is I'm Judge Kane a good teacher? <laughs> Very much. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Got a Padawan thing going on there. Yeah. I love it. Cool. That can only go one or two ways. Either I'm good, either it's a good <laughs> yeah. thing or I kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the only two options. Uh, so <laughs> let's see then. Uh, Judge Lawrence, give us that d20. Yeah. A 16. A 16. Oh no. You once lost a bet to one of the other judges. Could be so we know that Judy has no gambling. Yeah, <laughs> 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 I bet it. I've made the worst judge ever. <laughs> no gambling. <laughs> what was the bet? Yeah. Um, I believe it was at first outing. It was not a bad like gambling, but it was really like they were standing back to back, back and they were like, "Oh shit, we're not going to make it out of here." I bet we're going to get out of here, and they managed that. Gotcha. So yeah, so Lawrence mm -hmm. is sort of helpless. We're never going to get out of here. And Judge Judy looked at the camera and said, I bet we are. And I actually, then blew yeah, I up. think it was, it was like C3PO going about the, and how much danger they are and how small the chance of survival were. <laughs> and and the Judy were <laughs> like, don't tell me the odds. I bet we're going to make that out of here. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, yeah. They were done with the odds. Fantastic. Um, has that led to more betting? That's my question. Like, you know, is it a common thing where you get into situations and you give each other, like, little bets? Not necessarily gambling, but, like, you know, I like the Lego St. Gimli, I can shoot more perps than you sort of deal. Ooh, yeah, I like that idea. <laughs> Definitely. I, like I bet the... The, the perp on the right is the is the one, etc. Yeah, like right, I bet right, that right, one on yeah. the left is the runner, I bet that one's, you know, yeah. yeah. I bet when you come down there, there's going to be a sniper on top of that building, something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. 
Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like this. Good. Good. Okay, so uh, game one complete. It's time to move on to role-playing game question time. Dun, 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 I'm David Dimbleby, and I'm here to ask you some questions about um, your characters. First question is... It's a simple one. What is your character's ambitions? What do you hope to achieve either in your career or your personal life? That could well be achieved in the span of this adventure. Uh, Mr. Kane, what would you say your ambition is? Uh, well, his ambition is to is to join the uh, you know like internal affairs or what is it the special du judicial uh, uh, I'm going blank on it squad yeah special judicial squad which are you know <laughs> they look for corrupt judges because uh, we have to keep the tree of justice healthy it has to be pruned regularly so it can protect all those below it from the vicious That's sun right. rays and UV light of criminal criminality. It's a horrible uh, analogy, but you, you get the gist. Well, if you prune it, it makes it look bigger as well. So that's, you know, win-win oh, totally. for the law. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, Judge Fair, what is your ambition in life, my friend? I want to... Um, I don't know if there, well, there's probably a, a record of it somewhere. I want to break the record of... Um, the judge, as a senior judge, the one who sort of, uh, I don't know the right word, godfathered the most uh, younger judges in the system, so found uh, ah. the best recruit. It's not just a, a question of numbers, because, uh, I mean, I could go and uh, recruit uh, X number of judges, but then they, they wouldn't make it, uh, they would not pass the training, or they would die in the street, but uh, yeah, he really wants to... Uh, to find as many good recruits as possible and put them in the system and have them turn into uh, goddamn good judges uh, in the streets. Uh, it's really uh, a thing he wants to, to see happen. So you want to be the Jedi Master of the judges, in effect. I like that. Oh, does that make him jealous that um, <laughs> that Judge Fremont is, uh, is learning under Judge Kane rather than you? Um. No, I don't think so because, uh, well, I I trust uh, Judge Kane, uh, but uh, I certainly made sure that uh, if he was screwing this up, uh, he would have to do with him with me. <laughs> so, cool. so I keep an eye uh, on how good uh, he's treating uh, Judge Freeman, and by good I mean or bad or or strictly. Right. Right. Oh, cool. Um, you keep an eye on that tutelage. All right, Judge Judy, what would be your ambition in this life? Uh, Judge Judy wants to go right to the top. She wants to be the most famous, the most badass judge there is in Mega City 1. She, she would like to go like senior judge supervisor. She wants to be the cream of the crop, like the top dog. She's aiming for that top spot. Mm. Okay. And will she do anything to get there? Yes. Wow. <laughs> I like that answer. Good. Um, Judge Fruman, what's your ambition? Um, to be a stellar example of the side judge division and maybe increase its, increase its uh, prominence in the judge, pro judge program overall. Seeing we have an extra step up on the regular judges right right yeah bring the yeah bring more light to the uh the division of the judges cool mm -hmm. all righty then uh lawrence what is your ambition uh she wants to prove that uh department the department made the right decision to let her on the street um she wants to show them that the a med judge can do great deal of good on the streets. Um, she wants to specialize later in sharpshooting and on, the, um, on, on forensics, so she can do like autopsies on the spot. And there is this, I read about this device that you can do where you can have this holographic showing of what happened before. So you can help your fellow judges figure out what happened. So that's her ambition to basically hone the abilities, abilities she already has and put it to good use, but on the street, not on a lab, not in the science. 
Right, right, right. Yeah. Cool. Um, she wants to prove herself. Excellent. Uh, now, uh, I'll ask you the next question in question time is, what is a secret that you have that you wouldn't want your other judges to find out about? It could be something personal, like you secretly, you know, love to watch uh, daytime TV, or um, that actually maybe once you committed a crime, or um, I don't know. Use your imaginations of your character when it comes to a secret that maybe you wouldn't want other people to find out about. It could be innocuous. It could be a dark, dark secret. Judge Kane, there must be something that if the other judges found out about, you would be at least a little embarrassed about them that way. Uh, actually, yeah, and it's something he only found out recently. Uh, it's right at the edge of illegal, uh, but he, um, considering he came from like a not broken family, it's kind of, I, I, I don't know, in this world it seems like it's a little out of place, like normally they come up through orphanages and things like that, yeah. and so he maybe wasn't the, pri the prime candidate when going uh, into the judges program. And uh, his father basically pull, pulled some strings, and he didn't know that until, like, he had been a judge for years. And like I said, it maybe wasn't illegal, so he didn't bust his father, but it's one of those things that he thinks about, and it, it drives him. And uh, even him wanting to be, a, like, an like internal affairs kind of guy, he's like, it's something that he still thinks about, because it's, could it be construed as, you know, breaking the law? So, hmm. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, uh, Judge Fair, what might be a naughty little secret that you have that you wouldn't like your other fellow judges to find out about? Hmm. Uh, I think uh, uh, keeping in the same uh, idea. I think there's um, there's one of my the people I sort of put in the system uh, who turned out to be a corrupted judge and uh, fled away and now it's, it's like a on the run criminal but former judge and, ah. uh, and that person uh, yeah without me would, wouldn't have been a judge and uh, but uh, yeah, that's that's something people don't really discuss how he got in there. But maybe people care. People maybe people don't, or they just don't know. But that that's really mm. something which is uh, uh, in the back of my head all the time. That uh, it's my fault that uh, a, a rotten apple was put in the basket. Yeah, there's a there's a case file out there somewhere that if the the other judges came across, so it would certainly be an embarrassment to you, uh, at the very least. Um, judge Judy, dare I ask, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what secret it is you're hiding from the rest of your fellow judges? Are you a, a lizard person secretly? Um, have you killed to get where you are, or uh, no. what is it? <laughs> well, um, I think uh, Judy um she had a moment early in her career where she could have dispensed some justice but the perp was someone she grew up with and she hesitated and let them go and they escaped to commit more crimes and Ooh. she is she is deeply ashamed by this and also very nervous that if that got out then her whole career would go up in front of her face yeah, yeah, you guys have all got some some <laughs> some dark secrets, some uh, some skeletons in the closet. It seems like, but that makes total sense. Um, you hesitated at the moment um, that was most important. Okay, uh, Judge Freeman, what is what is your secret? She keeps oh, she keeps tabs on judges. Surfer's so thoughts are just you pick up information from them and if it's useful to advance her career or the career of the uh, side division she's more than ready to use it gotcha is it do you like report that information back or do you keep that to yourself she keeps it to herself it's okay 
looked down upon. I mean, I guess yes, definitely looked right. down upon. <laughs> right, right. But she does, yeah. She she sort of reads the surface faults of other judges, but keeps it to herself unless it's particularly. I don't know. <laughs> incriminating, I guess. Yes. Yeah, advantageous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> Judge Lawrence, what is your secret? Mm -hmm. Well, for one thing, she has a scrapbook that she wouldn't be too keen on everyone knowing about, but it's not her biggest secret. In truth, um, she spent a lot of time on the combat range because she really is a trigger-happy judge. <laughs> and what no one knows is when she's shooting perps, she's actually shooting for certain anatomically things. So when she does the <laughs> autopsies, she's really looking like, did I gut the medulla of <laughs> at this time? <laughs> so it's rather morbid. <laughs> And she wouldn't want anyone to know that that's something that she's doing, but she can't help herself. She's trying to be the most efficient when she's when she's killing or has to kill a perp, so yeah. Right. Right. So you like wanna know what like a grievous leg wound looks like and how to treat it. So you specifically go about inflicting only leg wounds so that you can inspect the the perps. Um yeah. That, no, she's that more makes like a She's more like, I'm going for certain types of headshots right, <laughs> that right. hurt people instantly. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to deal with isocubes. <laughs> She's very triggered at you. <laughs> Make sure they don't get back up again. Uh, Unless they cool. have weird diseases. So she, that she's like, maybe this is going to be named after. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, cool. Uh, and so for the final round of question time, it is... Your character's greatest fear. Now, this could be uh, a fear of failure, or it could be a certain type of uh, certain person that you're terrified of, or um, maybe you're already scared of robots or mutants or being alone. Uh, Judge Kane, what was what is your deepest, darkest fear? <clears throat> uh, I think Judge Kane's deepest, darkest fear. Uh... <sighs> Oddly enough, it's actually trusting people because of the way he was raised and the way he looks at being a judge. It's He doesn't want to become too good of friends with anybody because he suspects everyone of breaking the law, uh, especially given his his little secret. You know, if, if, if he can do it, right. anybody can. So maybe it's a bit of an overblown sense of self, but still, he it, it, that's his that's his that's one of his flaws. Uh, so yeah, he he's very standoffish, uh, and so he, he's actually doesn't like making uh personal connections and a little is a little uh, uh, uh you know rebels against that a bit um just because he assumes that everyone's gonna break the law and he's gonna take them down and um well so it's great is getting law. close to people yeah it's uh yeah there's a lot coming out here this is some therapy <laughs> he's a he, no man is an island uh cool uh, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> Bloody Ibiza. Uh, Judge Fair, what is your greatest fear? I think it's pretty close to one of your suggestions. Uh, I would say mm. he has a, I don't know, I guess it exists, um, like the opposite of agoraphobia. Um, he is afraid of like dying alone or being in a space uh, completely alone, like being locked. So I guess he, he would still sleep at the, I don't know what the, the Tower of Justice is called, so he still stays at the, the dormitories and this sort of things. And uh, yeah, he prefers to work with a partner. I mean, it's he's fine fighting off a, a bunch of perps on his own, but uh, yeah, like being stranded alone in an elevator, he could uh, he could freak out because of that. What about ice cubes? <laughs> 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 Not so good, not so good. Okay, cool. Good, good to know. Uh, none of us will be used against you. Uh, Judge Judy, what is your greatest fear and how can I manipulate it? What? Judy's greatest fear is being forgotten and irrelevant, of being a no one. Oh, um, wow. And also, she's kind of skeeped out by heights. <laughs> also, heights. <laughs> also, heights. <laughs> <laughs> not so great on the heights. Um, <laughs> But mostly it's the crushing fear of being forgotten and never remembered. Yeah. Mostly yep. the first bit. The, the existential dread that comes with being alive. Yeah. Good. 
So we need Good. to forget um, you on top of a tower then. <laughs> <laughs> no! Uh, Judge Freeman, what is your greatest fear? I think her greatest fear is... doing a mind read of someone as they're dying. Ooh. I think that happened in her, like, somewhere in her career, and it is, it was one of those things where you have to go back to, like, intense psychiatric, because it's the intensity of that feeling. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I like that. Cool. Um, and Lawrence, what would your greatest fear be? Yeah, the... One of the greatest fears is that she's going to go out in the field with another, with a squad of judges and runs out of all the medical supplies. They're being overrun by perps and she has to watch as they all die in front of her and she can't do anything to stop it because she has no supplies left. And there's this one fear in the back of her head when she's looking around in this, the city and sees the state of affairs. She's like, do we even really make a difference? There's a slight nagging feeling. <laughs> so it's, it's a bit of an existential crisis. <laughs> like, wow. I'm a doctor. <laughs> yeah. Part of um, the yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Um, wow. We this is this is some uh, emotionally revealing. Uh, <laughs> stuff we're getting into with you guys. <laughs> Your judges are fucked up. Like, this is what we're learning. Uh, in the session zero is that no one is perfect. Um, but now it's time for the, the, the next game of session zero, which is the character Never Have I Ever. This is a game in which I will ask you questions, and then you will raise your hand if you have done it. So I will say, uh, have you ever, um, I don't know, Committed a crime, and anyone that's committed a crime is to raise a hand, and then you will explain to the team what crime it was you've committed. I will take that down for your notes. It's not something that the other characters may know about. You can, you can, you can safely do. Um, but yeah, so let's start off. Let's start off with an easy one. Have you ever thought about committing a crime? Just a little niggling thought in the back of your mind, like maybe this once I could use it. Maybe it's for good. You know, maybe I could, uh, I could do some good with this. <laughs> <Yeah>. Oh, there <laughs> it is. <laughs> there it is, a cheeky finger. So, uh, okay, Judge, Judge, I think I saw Judge Judy's hand go up first, almost instantly. Uh, <laughs> Judy, what, what crime did you think about committing, uh, and why? Um, so this is a crime she thought about committing and didn't do, because as we all know, she, she grew up a bit of a ruffian, a bit of a badin. But she saw um, some older boys bullying and, and really being horrible and beating up one of her friends. And she thought about taking like a brick and smashing their heads. And she didn't do it, but she thought about doing a murder. Wow, that's a pretty, that's a big one to, <laughs> to be considering when it comes to crimes. Oh, you know. I thought about doing a murder once. Um, but hey, there you go. Didn't do it. It's locked away. But yeah, didn't do it. That's the important thing. You didn't do it. Um, Judge Fremont, what, what crime did you think about committing? Murder. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, I can't climb in on that. That's the same thing. I, was yeah. like, Some, I, feel I mean, sometimes you read. <laughs> sometimes you read. Sometimes you read thoughts, and there's no evidence, but you really want to kill them. Mm -hmm. Happens. Haven't right, done it yet. Right. Hey, so you better watch out for the ladies in this group, huh? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. What about Lawrence? Yeah, she knows the statistics, right? If she's putting perps into ice cube, she knows, okay, they did X, and if they're going to get out, they're likely to do that again, and maybe there's a downward spiral. So what if I end the spiral right here? Is that a thought that is coming up? And she's seen the signs, basically, but she never gave in so far. So let's hope that it stays that way. Right, right. I can end it all now for you. Uh, and <laughs> don't serve 18 years in ice so like you. I'm I'll just the ultimate you. treatment. <laughs> Oh my good lord. 
Lawrence is there with a needle, uh, just just waiting. Okay, good. Um, Judge Kane, I saw uh, the cheekiest of fingers uh, go up for, uh, for just a moment there. Uh, yeah, I, I think that uh, Judge Kane, when he was younger, uh, there was a there was that corrupt judge that kind of messed with his family for a bit um, and was trying to maybe pin something on them. And when he was out and about in town one day, he saw that judge out, like maybe getting something. And he stepped off his lawmaster and went into a building. And he almost one of his friends probably stopped him, but he basically would have gone over and just pushed his lawmaster over. Which probably would have been bad for him because it has self-defense countermeasures and stuff like that. So uh, it pretty much his friend saved his life. Uh, but yeah, that was his, the closest he came to committing a crime, which would be, you know, basically keying a judge's motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> you always key the judge's motorcycle. <laughs> Good. Good. Um, I like that. And by the way, for those of you in chat, if you have a question for, uh, for the judges, then feel free to ask it in chat and I'll... See if I ask it to him. Um, let's see. Um, this is one that could have came up earlier a little bit, but um, never have I ever allowed a crime to be committed. Oh, Judge Fair. Oh, and Judge Judy. <laughs> what a surprise. Uh, <laughs> Judge Fair, what crime did you allow to be committed here? I was going through the, the list of official crimes from uh, the old Games Workshop edition uh, of uh, mm -hmm. Judge Dredd, and uh, I think I allowed someone, something which could uh, get them five years in Isocube. I allowed them to pay f a ransom for their child, uh, which is uh, considered to be an incitement to kidnapping. Hmm. So, yeah, I knew about it, uh, and uh, I, I let it pass, so the, the family was reignited. But uh, that's, that's a very serious crime, actually. Yeah. Five years and I say for that. Okay. And Judge Judy, what crime did you allow to take place in Mega City 1? Well, it was the one that is her, one of her big secrets. Is It's a, her childhood friend. Um, she allowed them to uh, carry out a small theft because she's aware of what it's really like growing up in like the underbelly of Mega City One. What it's, you know, it's it's not great, and so she allowed them to take what they needed so that they could survive. Gotcha. I'm starting to wonder if uh, the regret of Judge Fair having Judge Judy joined the force. <gasps> oh. Oh. I, I don't want anyone to know uh, I'm the one who brought her in the system because she, she's not corrupted yet, technically. Hey, that but... might be pretty good, though. Yeah. I'll yeah. Like it's like, oh I'm no. I'm sure she would be soon. <laughs> it's on me. Yeah. Did I see three months hang out there as well, I'm pretty sure being in proximity to Judge Judy, the minor infractions <laughs> that lift up, <laughs> that I get with. Wow. She's ruining it. <laughs> <laughs> the rotten apple. She wants to be on the top. Oh, no. You were meant to bring yeah. balance to the law. Yeah. I think I'm going to change if my... She ascends, if she ascends, all these, like, guess what? Guess Look, what her early method, career intent. My <laughs> methods may be unorthodox, but by God do I get results. It's my biggest fear, actually. I'm gonna yeah, check out my rogue, biggest fear. My biggest fear is yeah, your biggest Judy fear is that Judge Judy is your boss. While you still live. <laughs> Judy, I have the moral high ground. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna need your gun and your badge, Judy. You've gone rogue. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, wow. This is this is revealing. Okay, so this is the last one in this branch of Never Have I Ever, but Never Have I Ever committed a crime. <laughs> Let's go straight up. And Judy, yeah. What's the crime? I mean, she grew up on the wrong side of the law. She was basically a perp until she was like nine, so she did lots right. of crimes. <laughs> Theft, bit of battery. Bit of battery. Bit of, yep. bit of you know, everything really. Bit of this, bit of that. Okay, good, <laughs> good. Um, we go on in here from the chat, which I like, uh, which is have, never have I ever feared for my life. Hmm. 
Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's the domino. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Judge Lawrence, when when did you fear for your life? Um, I think the first time when they when she was really out there, uh, back to back with it. Judge Judy. <laughs> She had this moment of, oh god, they're not going to make it. This is not at all like the stories and not at all like I envisioned it. So I guess that's the trigger of her greatest fear as well. This moment when right. it all overrules you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Hmm. Um, let's, let's go around then. Freeman, what, when did you fear for your life? I think it was one of those things where she goes after, after a perp, didn't re realize they had some sort of like protector like robot with them. And she almost didn't get out of that room alive. Gotcha. Cool. Uh, Judy. It was absolutely with Judge Lawrence. Um, Judy had that whole stay with me, kid, we'll be fine. Don't panic. And inside she's going, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. But she didn't show it. She had to keep it cool for the recce. Yeah, mm. yeah. That makes sense. Um, <laughs> Never tell me the odds inside. Fuck, 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 fuck. Uh, <laughs> um, Judge Fair, what do you fear for your life? I think at some point I took um, a shrapnel which managed to go through my helmet. And uh, the moment I really feared for my life is as I was lying on the ground, is when I stood and stand above me and come closer. And just the look in her eyes, that's why really scared me. I told that uh, not that my wand was very uh, dangerous, but I really thought that Judge Lawrence would try to dissect me then. <laughs> <laughs> the time you feared for your she really scared me. <laughs> <laughs> Judge Lawrence started off seeming like super sweet and innocent, but it turns out she's like fucking maniacal. <laughs> Who's the real monster? <laughs> uh, then Judge Kane, uh, what did you say if you like? Um, <clears throat> uh, I'm thinking maybe uh, you know he when he traveled with uh, Judge Judy somewhere. Uh, I don't know if Susie saw the message earlier, but I was thinking maybe we went out into the wasteland uh, to retrieve mm -hmm. uh, something from a, a judge that had gone on their long walk. Um, and it was out there. Maybe we got surrounded by muties or or whatever. But that was the only time because, and it was because he was outside the walls. He was out. They had no backup. It was just them. It was the only time he's ever felt that. Uh, and uh, yeah, he didn't really like it. He hasn't been back out since. Uh, and and it was a very maybe a traumatic experience for him. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Now this one is a tough question, and I plead with you judges in order to be honest with us here. Have you, no, in fact, never have I ever filed a complaint against another judge? Oh. 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 <laughs> Two complaints. Uh, judge Kane. Who did he file a complaint against, and why? Um, he filed a complaint against a judge who is no longer a judge. Um, mm. Judge Wobak. <laughs> do that. Screw it. But yes, uh, it was a judge. Maybe it was one of his training judges. Okay. And it was one of those things. Uh, yeah, it was one of his training judges, because this is where he solidified where he wanted to be. Uh, he saw this judge like taking bribes from a local gang and you know and of course the judge was like well they would have killed us if if i hadn't have done that you know i'm and gave the whole bullshit like i was doing it to save your life you know line and you know kane went ahead and 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 went to the higher ups uh and uh you know that judge was uh lost his badge well judge fair looked like two hands up from you the camera froze, so I was like, what's going on? Is it my right hand? <laughs> gotcha. my <laughs> Am I stuck in this box? Uh, <laughs> oh, you cut the you. grass under my feet, uh, Prit. Uh, I was about to say that. Uh, something similar. I think... Um, 
I think I filed uh, not a big complaint, but a series of small complaints uh, against Judge Freeman. Um, wow. Like, uh, yeah, not showing up on time, uh, uh, equipment not being uh, properly maintained, this sort of things. Wow. Oh, good. Not the unauthorized scans. Okay, good. <laughs> well, that's a good. Yeah, that's the good news. That. Um, <laughs> well, with all those unauthorized scans, uh, I mean, the piddly stuff probably slipped your mind. I mean, come mm -hmm. on. <laughs> then Judge Judy, um, who have you been reporting? Um, judge Judy reported a fellow judge who was onto her past life and was using it to like threaten her he was a he was a Ooh. dodgy judge and uh she was like now nah, motherfucker this ain't gonna fly i'm gonna get you first and she did wow okay okay um <laughs> then let's see uh this one this one in from chat never have i ever had feelings for another judge <laughs> oh judge k and judge lawrence Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. It, uh, it, it turns out uh, Judge Womack, uh, yeah, his training officer, yeah, she uh, she trained him in more ways than just the law. And so that's why it was especially hard. And it's it's also why his secret, wow. or no, I mean, his, uh, his whole, hard. I can't, I can't, yeah. <laughs> but that's why he can't like open himself up to other judges now because of that. Wow, he can never love again because <laughs> he's been hurt so bad. Yeah. Wow, that was a, a real kind, <laughs> real crisis of conscience for him. Whew. Uh that was that was so exciting. I forgot who else raised their hand. I think Judge Lawrence. Um, yeah. Go ahead, tell her, tell us all. Um, she has a lot of feelings <laughs> for a lot of famous judges. As I said, inside she's actually a fangirl. Right. <laughs> uh, holding right. in this queen when <laughs> she's going down the halls and she's a famous judge. But uh, she did have an, um, a relationship with a fellow um, med judge. But um, he was killed on the job and that was that. Wow. Tough. Did you have to dissect him? <laughs> I didn't actually. <laughs> <laughs> you God, really can't there. just ask people if they've had to dissect former <laughs> lovers. Come on. <laughs> hey, it's a standard question. I don't write this handbook. <laughs> Judge Judy, did you raise your hand as well? Was there a no, Judy's so self-obsessed no? she didn't have time for relationships. Yeah. Okay. I think so. I think it was just Judge Kane and and Judge Lawrence there who had, mm -hmm. uh, who had raised their hands. Wow, this is. This is getting intense. Um, <laughs> <laughs> here's another one, which I liked from uh, from the audience, which is, never have I ever rocked some non-uniform clothing that I am now ashamed of. Oof. Thinking about it. Judy's worn non-uniform clothing, but she's not ashamed. She has no shame. She doesn't know what shame is. She, yeah. The, the shame gene is not within her. No. Okay. Oh, Judge Fair. Last minute admission. I think he went to one of those uh, fun fair Luna Park where you put on like sumo suits as a civilian, uh, you know, to uh, to befriend <laughs> people. And you, I'm not sure if it's, I don't remember what it's called, but uh, there's something like that, and you. You uh, you bounce around uh, a large room, etc., and it's quite ridiculous. And he's he's full of regrets, and he since then he he won't he won't mingle with civilians anymore. He's just crushed by crushed by the shame of it all. Yeah, and it's probably one thing which took your picture also and made a postcard of it, and he he collected them, collected them all to destroy them. Right, right. Does he have one though that he's kept? His secret probably. shame. Yeah, probably yes. In a locker somewhere, <laughs> like in the basement, you go down there and you throw it open as just a sumo suit. 
I'll never wear this again. Yeah. I, uh, I look at it when I've got uh, feelings which I'd like to uh, to make some connection with civilians, and then I look at the picture and I'm like, no, never again. I, I guess I, I wear it as a pendant, and people tend to think that I'm looking like someone I, I lost or someone I would care for actually is just a picture of me this ridiculous I look very deeply like never again I'm crying oh. Oh. it's like a superhero outfit that you won't put on because you worry about who you'll become <laughs> it's like when Batman won't put on the mask oh my god that's good that's good. Okay. Um, here's your next one. <laughs> oh, this is fun. Never have I ever questioned the law. There is a lot of laws, and a lot of them can make you serve a lot of time. And for seemingly small offenses that maybe you think are actually a little bit too strict, or maybe the law isn't strict enough for your liking. And in fact, some of these laws should be doubled, nay, tripled. Uh, for some of these uh, these damn perps in order to bring real justice to Mega City One, um, Judy, uh, it's no surprise now that your hand's going up. Um, no, well, what, what, you know, Judy is the worst judge that has ever lived, apparently. But um, she questions why some laws are so strict and why some are so lax. She feels like some penalties should be much much harsher than they are. But some mm. penalties are far too strict for smaller infractions, and she she's not happy about that balance. She wants to bring she wants to bring balance to the force. Right. Yeah. She wants to bring it balance back. above all else. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Judge Fair is uh, is is making sure of that. You are the <laughs> you are the, the prophesized judge, but uh, turns out maybe you're not such a good apple. Okay, uh, Judge Fremont, uh, similar deal there or something else. No, opposite. Laws need to be harsher Ooh. on the masses. There's so many of them, so few judges. Maybe being more afraid of us would keep them in line. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, Judge Lawrence? Agrees with both of them. Some of yep. the laws do seem a bit harsh, but a lot of times she thinks they're not harsh enough. So. Cool. Good, good. Um, and as for Judge Kane and Judge Fair, you think the law is perfect as it is? No change. I think the law is perfect. I think people are imperfect. If you had judges that wouldn't give in to temptation, then we could keep this society in order as is. Yeah, I wow. think that one time I let it pass with that uh, ransom uh, law. But, uh, yeah, I don't think the law is badly written. Uh, it's just, yeah, uh, it was a moment of weakness on my part, but uh, I saw the consequences of my choice and uh, it comforted me in the idea that I should not have let them uh, pay that ransom. Right. That makes sense. Okay. This is a fun one. Never have I ever consorted with a civilian off the regs. Oh, we know that Judge Fair had a had a dalliance with the sumo suit, um, and and still struggles um, with that Never decision again. every day. Has <laughs> has the temptation Never to again. go outside of the judges <laughs> um, e ever struck a judge? Judy, tell us all about it. I think Judy Double has tea. definitely had a couple of scandalous one-night stands with wow. civilians. <laughs> just seeing Callum just going, oh my god, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> I think she's definitely, you know, hit the town. She's trying, yeah, she's a woman of the people. Trying to bridge that gap between the judges and the, uh, <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Does anyone else know about that? Do you think? Um, I, I think Freeman maybe lives next Freeman. door and can <laughs> read your mind. <laughs> so Doesn't Freeman have to read her mind though. <laughs> it's just, just loud. It's like yeah. she just has just, to listen. <laughs> 
Oh my lord. <laughs> yeah. Just a bed That's on crazy. a wall. <laughs> you try and meditate and there's just so much noise. <laughs> oh I boy. got the toads. The toads, I can't hear them. I'm C. Please make it. You also, also get a super messy inner dialogue going on. Yeah. Oof. Wow. <laughs> That's oh a, that Why? is not a thing oh I would God, wish to do. <laughs> Someone has oh. to take the fall, it's gonna be you. <laughs> <laughs> Taking one for the team. Okay, Judge Judy, now we now we know. Um <laughs> Oh I like this one from from Charlie in chat. Never have I ever had an addiction. Oh. Ooh. Kane is addicted <laughs> to the law. I was gonna say it takes its <laughs> Well, in, in what ways does that addiction manifest? Uh, he like he's always in his book, like his his judge's book. Like he's just like that 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 judge that is utterly like he, he can't be his focus can't be broken. He's always working, and when he's off work, he's thinking about work, and he just that's the way he's done it. He's like a I kind of see him as like a paladin. Like the law is his right. thing; it's his holiness, sure. and he can't he can't cheat on the law with anything. <laughs> You wear your helmet in the shower. I've never taken my helmet off. <laughs> that's oh. gross. <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't think they're self-cleaning, um, but that's that's a, that's okay. The grime of justice serves you well. Um, <laughs> excellent. Now, at this point, I will open up the question to the to the judges. If you, a judge or a player, have uh, never have I ever that you maybe wish to confess to and thereby ask the question, or you have something in mind that you would like to ask your other judges that's sort of been niggling away at you this uh, this whole time. Maybe there's there's something that your other judges have done, or they think maybe you've done that you'd like to bring up here. We will open the uh, <laughs> we'll open the court to you all um, to see if you have any questions for one another. Dun, dun, dun. I've got a good one. Um, yeah. Never have I ever dispensed a sentence too harsh for the crime. Ooh. They just deserved it, maybe. Yeah, oh, it's a domino it's, effect. It's a lower <laughs> roll. It's a lower <laughs> roll. <laughs> We're not taking okay. care of this. <laughs> Judge Lawrence, um, you know, you, you have mentioned before that you've considered putting people out of their misery in an ISO cube uh, <laughs> before they serve their full sentence. Um, is that something yeah. you've, you've ended up doing, or is it something else I'm, that you've... I mean, uh, that would have done a crime, so she wouldn't have done that. But right. some ca in some cases, you would have maybe first asked questions and then shot. <laughs> And the pisses, she was like, yeah, no. Let's right, get rid so of she, Right, no need to ask questions about the perps. They are guilty. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and you just, you just fucking smoked them. Yeah. If, I mean, yeah, if there's no easy way to uh, contain them and ask them, then yes, she would be very, as I said, trigger happy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need some more headshots. Uh, <laughs> cool. Um, three months. Too harsh. Tell yeah. us all. Sometimes, sometimes you're too much of a menace, and you have to add some time to the ISO cube, or maybe forever. Sometimes. Sometimes, maybe forever. Um, <laughs> they've got to go away. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, off, this and... plane, off this plane of existence, maybe. Hmm. <laughs> right. <laughs> Judge, Judge Judy, too harsh when? So, it's happened more than once. Um, once was uh, she used her position as a judge to sort of get her own back on somebody she had a grudge with from her youth. Um, and I mean, they were a perp anyway. They had it common. They were gonna do worse crimes, so she was just preemptively killing them. Um, the preemptive strike. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
And another <laughs> was uh, after she started to gain some notoriety and a bit of fame on the streets, one particular perp was very, very disrespectful and um, like was very, very rude and, and might like peed on her bike or something. So she just sort of invited and in, invented a crime that he had done beyond pissing on her bike. And he's just never getting out of the ISO cubes until he's like 300. <laughs> He's just living there forever. Well, may maybe he had uh, like some kind of like communicable disease, and so you tacked on like assault on a judge on that. Yep. Yeah, so the paperwork's squeaky clean. Right. Right. <laughs> um, Judy's clever when it comes to manipulating them. All. Yeah. Good. Can I ask a follow-up question of Judge Freeman? Mm -hmm. Have you ever acted on thoughts alone if someone did not actually commit the crime but thought about it and you were really sure mm. they were going to do it? Yes. Probably. Mm. You know, you make up, you make excuses like minor infractions that add up into large infractions that would have would have mm. ended up for the time in the ISO cube. So, yes. Oh, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Good. The full police uh, of, of Judge Riemann, mm -hmm. sir. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, good. Um, all right, so any other never have I ever questions that you guys would like to um, to ask each other here before we move on to our next game? I have one. <clears throat> yes. Never have I ever thought about quitting being a judge. <sighs> like ever hanging up the helmet. Turning yeah. in your lawgiver. Oh. Yeah, J Judge Kane, Judge uh -huh. Fair, all oh, the top row. Oh. <laughs> the plot twist. Yeah. Kane, tell us all. It was. It was. It was actually right after uh, he turned in his training officer. Like as he was doing wow. it, he was. He was thinking like, I can't do this. They won't respect me you know turning on another judge and so he he had a moment of crisis till maybe another judge like talked to him about it and uh talked him out of it and that's when he decided like yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna go for the uh, special judicial squad and like this is needed and obviously you know i have the right mentality for it and and everything but he he was thinking about just like walking away right there wow wow <laughs> And Judge Judge Fair, what made you question? Um, it's not exactly a question. I'm going to have some uh, follow-up, ideological follow-up to uh, the Arctic Tulu campaign. Um, mm. After discussing quite a bit with a visiting uh, judge from the South Bloc, so, uh, so the uh, Soviet Union equivalent to Mega City One, uh, he was a bit. Uh, convinced by his explanation about the welfare system and uh, he considered uh, leaving Mega City One and his role as a judge here to become a judge in the South Block instead. Mm -hmm. Wow. Interesting. Which Interesting. I don't think is the real option. I don't think there's an option. Like, I think retirement we go in the wasteland and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Um, so, <laughs> the paperwork is squeaky clean, unlike the bike. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, <laughs> cool. Uh, any other questions you guys want to ask one another here? Learn a bit more about your characters, some dark secrets that they might have. Uh, I'd like to ask Judge Judy <laughs> for. <laughs> what, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, sort of. I, I'd, li How I'd like to do some, I'd, I'd like some character development on why why would Judge Dirty would actually think in judge is a word he calls. Um I feel like she's quite the self-serving kind of person and she would say uh, her thought is if she is the one that is dispensing the punishment then she can you know get ahead of that particular sword um 
she's seen what it's like on the other side and she doesn't want to be on the other side of that so she's trying to like get within the belly of the beast as it were you know make sure the uh closer to the harm ugh, the closer you are to danger the further you are from harm right so she's getting up with the law i mean there is a part of her that doesn't like the perps doesn't like how she grew up and she does want that to stop so it's not completely selfish she does want to bring some order and to get rid of the crime on the streets because it's not good it's bad and horrible and it created someone like her and she can recognize that's terrible she knows it's, it's, an, odd, it's an odd weird <laughs> bit of self-awareness <laughs> yeah, she's Damn. like super aware, super self aware of how terrible she is, but but keeps doing the sort of things that she's she's bad for. When the system can create things like me, you need me to be make sure the system doesn't create me. <laughs> exactly. She she knows how they work, so she needs to get in there to make sure stop it. I, I know how the bad guys think. <laughs> so you you to, are to catch a bad uh, guy. You, you gotta think like a bad guy. Yeah, you're what's his name and catch me if you can. After he turns over. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Frank Abagnale. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, you Frank, need Frank someone Abagnale. like me. You look Frank Abagnale. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> What's 2000 AD? Oh, no. I feel like Judge Judy like scammed her whole way into becoming a judge now. You oh, know, 100%, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she's She's gone for, full Frank. Um, wow. <laughs> I like that a lot. Uh, man, these characters are fucking hilarious already. <laughs> um, struggling. Struggling, it seems, with the law. All right, I've got to grab a drink because I've just been sweating in the helmet for an hour and a half and by, uh, I can feel this headache coming on. So ask one another some questions about your characters um, or, you know, uh, uh, elucidate us a bit more about your characters. Maybe you've had some more ideas about them as we've been as we've been talking here. Um, maybe as well, is there like a leader to our unit here? I'm thinking maybe one of us is sort of like a, you know, somewhat in squad charge. Um, what are your different roles? Uh, when, it, when you come to a crime scene, what do you guys do? Uh, I guess, how do you how do you function as a squad can be the question. Um, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so we are three street judges, a side judge, and a med judge. Okay, mm -hmm. so that means we're probably all in the same block, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or we work the same district. Mm -hmm. What's oh, our just district? Oh, God. Ooh. 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 Because, uh, I don't know, I... Whether or not we need, like, I don't think we really need a leader, but um, I do like that everybody has a different way of looking at uh, being a judge. Mm. Uh, it's Even though there is a little bit of overlap, like, I think Judge Fair and Judge Kane both kind of have similar, like, methods, or we're coming at it from pretty much kind of the same way. You're coming but, at it uh, from the law and not, like, some <laughs> whatever we're <somewhere> else. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure you, you, seem, you seem quite close to the, to the uh, yeah, Paragon Judge Wild. Yeah, you are. Me, me I'm more, um, I was looking at the, the thing in the character creation, and... Thing stuff which are I'm, I'm sort of the social judge. Uh, I'm more into engaging with people, discussing them, mm. getting a lot of intel. Okay, so, so you can be like the face when we get out in the public. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Like and uh, yeah, I'd like to have as much information about the community. Community judge, yeah, like uh, and. I was looking at the exploit, etc. Like citizen manipulation, that's definitely something uh, I would love. Yes. Voice, voice of the law, crowd control, mm -hmm. and uh, don't know if we are there. We can take this, but there's a thing called interrogator. So that's definitely something we'd be good at. So not like the face, like in the A team face. Hey, I'm cool and uh, friendly mm -hmm. with you, but more. Oh, yeah, I mean, like a little round face, right? Hmm. Yeah, you, you're just the guy that, that, you know, you basically, you're the bard, I'm the paladin, Susie's the rogue, uh, Fremont is the sorcerer, or some kind of enchanter. Sorcerer or warlock? He's the warlock. Or warlock. <laughs> or the warlock. Yeah, the warlock, sorry, my bad. And and, and then Lawrence yeah, is the cleric. Yeah. yeah. See, I'm not reintroduced in 5e yet. Wow, evil. <laughs> it always comes back to D&D, so, sorry. 
So basically, when the citizens or perhaps look at us, um, because you are talking, they would say that Judge Fair is the leader, right? Because he's taking point? No, I, f no I don't think so. Not necessarily. I can be more... I just seem a bit more approachable, which is not exactly mm. what a leader projects. Mm. Yeah. I would say, like, maybe rocking up to a scene, if all of us went as a squad, like, Kane and Fair would be the ones that be like, all right, what's the situation? We're going to take <laughs> command of this, what, what's happening? And then we three just do whatever the fuck we do in the I background. Think, <laughs> yeah, I think Fremont just kind of skulks yeah. around and just kind of just gets mm. the read of people. Just just a creep. Mm. Mm -hmm. No, I, yeah. I, I love that. Because uh, you know that as people are talking about things, they might say mm -hmm. something but be thinking another. So while while Judge Fair is interrogating them, you're reading their mind. That's just really yeah. perfect. Like yeah. this one. Judge Lawrence actually really likes to keep her distance. She's good with pistols, but not good on hand to hand combat. So she only gets in there when people are on the ground, basically, either dead or needing medical care. Other than that she's looking at everyone through scope. <laughs> she doesn't want to get too close. You always show up right at the end of the, the action. Yeah. Yeah, she also has a lot of equipment, and I'm thinking of taking the exploit always prepared because you can take it when you have a l high logic mm. um, score. And you can always say, like, I <laughs> was waiting for just this to happen, and this is what I brought to fix the situation. So, yeah, I think she likes to stay back and just look and analyze things. I think Judy's the one that likes to be there in the action when it's happening. She's mm -hmm. like the one chasing down perps. She's the one like, you know, the uh, the gun is out at any chance. She's ready for it. You know, she's she's in the... Um, sorry, I'm just back here. So, um, awesome. Sounds like we've got an idea of what you guys do in battle. Um, so I have a couple of questions for you guys now as well, which is basically just Fleshing out some NPC contacts, uh, friends, allies, enemies, that kind of stuff uh, that each of you might have so that we can sort of weave them into the story a bit. So um, firstly, I want to ask you about a friend, then I'll ask you about an enemy, and then we'll ask about a contact that you have. So the friend might be someone that is, you know, it could actually be another uh, PC, I guess, but let's try and make it an NPC, maybe someone that you live close to or that you know, it could be a family member, uh, an old friend who's maybe a citizen, maybe another judge, um, and then uh, contact might be someone that's more useful, someone that's, it could be someone that's um, like an information broker, someone that skirts on the edge of being a perp, uh, or in fact, could even be a perp, indeed. Um, so let's start with, um, let's start with a friend. So uh, Cain strikes me as someone that maybe doesn't have too many friends, um, but maybe he's got one or two. He certainly has had friends amongst the other judges before. Um, who might be a friend of his? Uh, well, I think uh, I'm just going to go ahead and give you some great uh, NPC fodder. It's his parents. They're still alive. They're still together. Uh, and it's about, other than judges, it's literally the only, like, right. non-judge, like, contacts he really has and, like, spends any kind of real time with or his parents. Um, but, you know, cool. he still goes over every Sunday to have lunch. Does he still wear a helmet? Yeah, still, of course. Yeah, You never know. Like, <laughs> yeah. Cool. yeah. I mean, they, they live in a better part of town, but, like, you know, if, if there is a better part of Mega City 1. But, uh, but yeah, you never know. A bullet could come flying through any time. He's always ready. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Judge Fair, who is a, uh, a friend of yours? Hmm. Uh, I'm going to put a... I'm going to pay tribute to... Um, uh, a game of Judge Red I played with my wife. Uh, she based it on uh, Alice in Wonderland, and on the spot for that game, uh, I made up an additional NPC, which was uh, Mouse. Uh, he's he's not working because uh, he suffers from narcolepsia, and uh, he hangs out a lot in his city block, and uh, it's got. Uh, yeah, advantages which allows him not, not to work, but that means a lot of people come and hang out in his place or he wand wanders around. Well, he doesn't wander too far because of narcolepsia, but uh, he's got quite a bit of intel about what is going on uh, in, in the block. Cool. Not a purpose, okay, as far cool. as I know, but I, I visit him uh, yeah. quite often. Okay, good. Um, Judge Judy, who on earth is your friend? 
Uh, Judy has a friend within the judges. He is a med judge called uh, Judge Deed, and he um, he he and her, you know, they they they've hung out for quite a while. They've like sparred, been down the firing ranges. He patches her up all the time when she comes in with bits missing. Yep, they're, they're good. They're good friends. It's someone she can rely on and trust within the judges. Okay, cool. Yeah. You need someone that has your back. Is he aware yeah. of how bad you are? Um, I think he's sort of kind of aware enough where he can't legally get in trouble. Like, she'll come in <laughs> with like a bit of ear bitten off and he'll be like, don't tell me how it happened. Just let's get this fixed, you know? Like, right, he knows right. just enough. <laughs> good, good. Uh, so, so I like to keep my friends as well. Uh, <laughs> I know just enough, but not enough to incriminate them. Good. Um, Judge Fremont, who's your friend? I think um, her friend is uh, Judge Erickson, a um, side judge, probably her mentor, like, during training, during her long duration with the side judges. And I think it's just, it's her way to kind of unpack kind of like the mental stresses and kind of, it's someone that kind of understands like what that's like. As far as being yeah, able to yeah. like constantly read people's minds, having to kind of like have that amount of discipline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand the sort of mental strain that uh, a judge goes under. Hmm. Cool. <laughs> that living that living next to Judy entails. <laughs> <laughs> Taxes the mind. Um, <laughs> I understand. Uh, J- judge Lawrence, um, who's your friend? Yeah, my friend is also another judge. She, uh, her parents are also alive and well, but uh, and she has still contact with them, but she's not close. She calls once a week to tell them that she is doing good and comes over to, for dinner. But her friend actually is Judge Rodriguez. He was once a med judge, but he changed departments and is now part of the street judges. And he is uh, part of the sharpshooters. And he's kind of her role model for someone where she's like, yeah, I can see myself in his place, I don't know, a few years down the road. So uh, whenever mm. she is not sure if she's really in the right spot on the streets, uh, she goes over talking to him and is reassured that uh, this is the right way. Cool. Good, good, good. Uh, then let's talk about who your enemies are. Now, these may be perps that have yet to, um, to to feel the swift arm of your justice, or they could be enemies amongst your own team that you feel like are um, you know, out to get you or don't trust you for whatever reason. It could be uh, an anti-corruption internal affairs style um, uh, threats which you are facing, uh, <laughs> Judy, uh, or it could be... Um, you know, it, it, it could just be the, the, the people who live across the street from you who always give you the stink eye. Um, Judge Kane, who would you say your enemy is? Uh, I think my enemy, uh, uh, not to come back to it again, but his enemy is his former training officer, uh, Judge Womack, right. who, spent, who spent like it's 10 years in the cubes and, or whatever, and maybe he's just about to get out or just got out one of those two. Uh, either oh. just happened or is about to happen. I'll leave that up to you. But he yeah. knows that that you know I basically took everything away from this guy, and um, that can't be good. Mm. Cool, Judge Fair. Who is your enemy? Uh, I like the yeah taking the fairy tale things. There's often a sort of parodies and things in, uh, in Judge Red stories, I find. So I find his nemesis could be uh, something based on the P.A. Piper. Mm-hmm. So uh, so that character would literally do the opposite of what he's doing and uh, recruiting uh, youngsters to, to become perps as part of his organization. Uh, I don't oh, know what yeah. he, The law doesn't lo- know what he looks like. Uh, but yeah, he's got this reputation, and then we, we would see someone. So he's, he's like a gang leader, but very elusive and very good at uh, recruiting and plo- employing people, etc. Mm, yeah, sort of like a, a Fagan type, yeah. 
Yeah, I like that. But his name, uh, yeah, his name is known, and you will see graffiti, you know, and then uh, on the corner of a block. Cool. Alrighty, Judge Judy, who is your enemy? It's a fellow judge, but not within this group. Um, it's somebody she came up with through cadets, uh, a rival that basically... <laughs> all people who used to be her friends are terrible. <laughs> I don't like her. <laughs> well, it was, it's kind of like, you know, that thing from day one and the cadets where there's just somebody who's an asshole and you hate them. Yeah. And they've just continued hating each other all the way through their careers. Mm. And, um, what department just a... are they in now? Ooh, I think they are a... I think they're another street judge. Mm. And, they've got um... a different gang. Yeah, they've got a different, like, unit. Yeah, they're in a different unit, but, like, if you pass each other in the street, it's like... You know, as you go past, but not because... There's, like, a competition between which unit gets a case. So, like, if, if yeah. your unit gets put on the case or their unit gets put on the case. Um, Maybe yeah, it's the opposite absolutely. of you is honest, but in a corrupt squad. While you, you are who you are in an honest squad. <laughs> is she? I don't know. Semi honest at the very least. Um, okay, good to know. Though Our rival street judge, uh, Judge Fremont. Who is your enemy? I think it's along similar to along. Judy's line for it's someone that maybe they came up with, but um, they work. They are a interrogation judge, specialized judge in the same that works the same district. And I think during a particularly like important like case, she managed to um, upstage him by basically getting the information that they wanted and just being an absolute shit about like reminding him like, you know, soon. They won't need your kind here. They'll just have us doing this. Just every mm. time, every time she sees him, reminds him. Yeah, and she likes feeling like that. She's like, and she knows it. It really gets, like, she really gets to him. Cause she can yeah. like feel that, feel that. I like it. And Judge Lawrence, uh, could how could someone like you have an enemy? <laughs> Easy. She doesn't really know who the enemy is, actually. Um, it's <laughs> the person who killed her lover, or who was the one instigating um, the, the death of uh, her former lover. He was, um, her lover was a crime scene processor, a med judge as well. And he went there in one of those technical wagons and stuff with the whole team. And they found the guys who blew that... Um, that car up, but it was always hinted at that uh, someone is basically in the background who uh, created the whole uh, thing, and they did, have not found that person yet. And so her enemy is an Mr. X. I don't know, an unknown. That's why I'm wearing this job. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, so like you know, there's someone must have blown up the car. You don't know who, but um, yeah, maybe there are some clues that we can pick up on there. Okay, good. And then. Lastly, uh, contact. So this could be someone that has a good amount of information that you can get to, or it could be a fellow judge in another uh, division that you can go to for autopsies or uh, advice, mm -hmm. um, uh, a mentor or a tutor, someone like that. Uh, Kane, who do you think your contact might be that you can call upon? Um, I think my contact is probably the judge that talked me into staying uh, as a judge mm. after doing what I did you know, turning in my training officer, he's, he's, and he's kind of like guided me every time I'm feeling a little, you know, despondent or whatever. Uh, the one time that that actually happened. Uh, yeah, he, I, I go to him. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know. Whatever, whatever his name is, maybe he works, uh, in the special, uh, you know, judicial squad, uh, right already. And so he, he's, you know, he's also like, Hey, I'm going to follow this guy's example. Um, Good, yeah. Cool. So whatever okay. is... Right, well, you, you, you can give him a name. I don't know. I'll come up a name. Yeah, yeah no worries. Um, Judge Fair, who is your contact? <sighs> um, my contact? Can I... 
<clears throat> Can the others have a, a go? No, I need to give it more. Yeah, time. yeah, we'll, we'll swing back around to Judge Fair in a minute. So, um, Judge Judy, who's your contact? You can call upon. Judy knows a, a, a Pongo, a con man within their district, and uh, who has his pulse on what's going on in that area. And she can be, you know, dark alley, have a quick word, find out where the, uh, where the crimes are happening. We can go sort him out. Cool. Uh, is he technically a perp or someone that? Oh yeah, he's hundred percent perp. Yeah, he's a perp. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Uh, Frumont, who's the person that you could call upon if you're in a tough spot? Um, I think hers is um, Dr. Cole. She's a um, she runs one of the um, pharmacy like blocks over there that um she goes to get her like uh prescriptions and stuff for some of the uh some of that she needs for like psychic stuff so it's kind of she's kind of like her contact as far as like what's going on in the block right right cool um and lawrence mm -hmm. who's your contact uh, my contact is Judge Garcia, who's a tech judge, and he is there to repair equipment. As a med judge, you have to have a lot of uh, med scanners and stuff like that, and so he's oh. the go-to guy in order to get the, the outfit, <laughs> basically. Nice, nice. You're sort of Q, yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. uh, judge Fair, have you had a chance to think of who your contact might be? Yeah, uh, I guess uh, my contact would be someone uh, who's nicknamed by everyone uh, as the Stork. And okay. uh, he's a, a very ugly looking guy. Uh, he was kind of a celebrity because of that. Uh, but beside that, he's known for uh, yeah, uh, centralizing uh, yeah, the, the children, following the children who goes in and out of uh, the different orphanage. Uh, so he got uh, a lot of connection through that, and uh, would have heard uh, about perps recently. Uh, yeah, game, get, being sent to ISO cubes or children. He's kind of in charge of the social services. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Cool. All right. So that is um, sort of everything I had down for us. So anything else, any questions you guys had uh, either one another or points you wanted to raise about your characters, things that you wanted to, uh, to touch on um, before we move on here? Or are we all good? I want to know what everybody's judges look like. Yeah, let's get some descriptions, Joe. <clears throat> uh, Judy, do you want to start us? All right, yeah. Um, Judy is, um, and I'm going to be called out by chat, a big, buff, tall lady. Um, she has a helmet, doesn't wear it, um, has long hair that she wears down. She's she's kind of the, uh, like, a very, um, like, if Prince Charming was a, a, a judge, you know, she's very, uh, like, smug in her appearance and uh, she's very confident that no perp would actually get close enough to actually hurt her that's why she don't give a shit about her helmet right right wow so she's often not seen wearing the helmet then yes hangs on the bike okay yeah, um, yeah hair in the breeze and on the bike just like freezing. yeah rock and roll uh judge Fremont, what does uh what does your side judge look like um yeah she's um She's actually, she's fairly, like, small for, I guess, someone that's a judge. She's on the smaller side, a little more frail, but, like, very, like, tied back, um, black hair. Very, like, just gaunt and kind of gothy looking. Just very intense. Cool. Intense eye. So, yeah, yeah. Nice. We're, I guess we're, like, opposite. Judge Judy's, like, very, very, just very, like, <laughs> Yeah, you're, like, yeah. Yep. Um, Lawrence, what does Lawrence look mm -hmm. like? 
Um, Lawrence is perfectly average in height, like five foot six, I guess. Um, and she has a very lean build because she is not, as I said, a hands-on judge. She's more like uh, using yeah. pistols and going in then to apply first aid and stuff like that. So she tends to have a lot of bags with her. All the equipment has to go somewhere, right? <laughs> right, right. And uh, like this medical... Um, I'm thinking bones here, Star Trek, because everyone has the shoulder. Yep. <laughs> like, right? With the scanner and stuff like that. So um, she has red hair, also long. But other than Judge Judy, she has this very tightly braided to her skull and pinned up so she can put the helmet on comfortably and can take it also off without having helm her, I guess. Cool. Um, <laughs> Judge Fair. What do you look like, fairest of our judges? Uh, I think there's one thing maybe which is sort of out of. Well, it's not. It's not an authorized to judge it, but um, he's got a bit of, of hair. Um, what's the word? Uh, his hair is a bit too long for his helmet, and the the blonde and curly. I picture sort of a not completely buffed up, but somewhat uh, buffed up rubber plant. You know, from Led Zeppelin, so long curly, right. somewhat angelic, but a bit scrawny the, around the face, uh, but, uh, but still uh, rather muscular because he trains a lot. Right, right, <laughs> awesome. And uh, and Mr. Kane, what's he look like? Uh, yeah, I'm thinking Kane. He's uh, he's built like Wolverine. He's like five foot two, and just like like four feet wide. Like, he's just this fucking, just, like, little, like, beast of a man. Um, but he and, he, and the thing is, is maybe even his compatriots here have never seen him without his helmet. Like, uh, but underneath, he has, he's pretty plain, you know, he's not, nothing to write home about, but he's, uh, he's bald, no hair, uh, sometimes has uh, a day or two growth, but, you know, that's about the most they ever see him out of uniform. So. <laughs> right, right. You guys look like pretty hardcore, then, uh, <laughs> on various different levels. Um, we've got, you look like a sort of sci-fi biker gang. Um, <laughs> you could definitely be in, yeah, in some kind of commercial. Uh, awesome. Well, go ahead. I also, I also imagine Judge Fair to be the next poster judge for the recruits, the Justice Hall needs you. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Smile. Yeah. Yep. With his justice yeah. mullet. Yeah. <laughs> justice just mullet. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna feel the mullet of justice. Just like <laughs> hair flip. Oh. Yes. Justice oh, in the front mm. and justice in the back. Justice in the rear. <laughs> 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 oh no! <laughs> <What's happened? laughs> oh man, that's good. Um, so I think uh, with that being our sort of session zero, should we head into our sort of first scene here and uh, and actually play with our judges for a bit while we have some time? I think we should. Um, <laughs> fantastic, man! I have to make a note of the the mullet in my notes uh, for for obvious reasons. Oh, also, um, as I'm sitting up here as well, there are some wild magic surges from Charlie. There was a wild magic surge for Lawrence and Judy. It is a, a D10,000. Um, and you could do, uh, to remind you guys, fancy guys, you can do four slash die, space, one D10,000. And we'll see what horrific fates may well have uh, happened to our, uh, our judges at some point during their careers. If not, right at the beginning of the game. Oh boy! Oh, this this table. Uh, if Lawrence, if Judge Lawrence is now bleeding, she ages ten d ten years. That's for ten d ten. Let's just let's just do it anyway. Wait, what? Ten d ten. It's okay. It's only sixty three years. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it's not necessarily that you've actually aged this long. I actually think there was a chapter on aging in in World's 2008 that I have to go and find. But it's that uh, I think 
Yeah, Lauren says, you know, maybe uh, there's all sorts of like biochemical shit happening to your body to like keep you active as a judge, keep you going. Um, <laughs> turns out <laughs> she's been doing that for a while. Uh, so, <laughs> so it could have been that she spent a long time in Judge Academy trying to become a judge. Um, and this is the second I want to get there. Um, they had to so work to get out of the science department into the street judge division, right? right? And that, that took 62 years, um, so there you go. Oh boy! Um, I have some fun! First wait. <laughs> and Susie, Judge Judy, all invisible matter within one mile is clear like glass. Hmm... I'll have a think about that one while I put on this plastic death mask. Uh, so, we'll see about that one. I'll have, a, I'll have a think on how to convert that to something that would be fun. Okay. <laughs> Man, this is going to be good. So, uh, let's, let's dive into our first scene here, seeing as we've got just a better part of an hour left uh, to head into the first part of our adventure, which are of course, we're going through a bit of the robot wars, but I'll also read out a quick introduction to the world of 2000 AD in case there are folks out there who have yet to come across uh, uh, this game. So, it is the year 2099, and the world is much changed from how we know it. After a disastrous global war, much of the planet has been reduced to a radioactive wasteland vast stretches of which are uninhabitable, both from the radiation and the mutated horrors that make their home in the wastes. Civilization now huddles in vast megacities, conurbations encompassing massive stretches of land. Three such megacities have risen from the ruins of the United States of America. Megacities 1 and 2 and their southern neighbor, Texas City. The most important megacity and the primary setting for Judge Dredd's stories is Megacity 1. Although the Megalopolis' footprint eventually shrank after a series of devastating events, at its height, it spread across the entire eastern seaboard of the United States, from New England to Florida, and its population reached upwards of 800 million. Much of Mega City 1 consists of city blocks, enormous starscrapers large enough to home up to 50,000 citizens, the press of people and widespread unemployment, Due to the existence of sapient robots makes Mega City 1 a dangerous and unruly place. One where people fritter away their time on the current fad or distraction that happens to be taking the city by storm. Mega City 1's size and sprawl makes enforcing law and order difficult, and so the city employs special law enforcement officers called judges to patrol the city and police its streets. No simple cops, judges have complete power to enforce the law by any means they deem necessary, sentencing and convicting any criminals they catch, and, rarely, executing them for the most despicable crimes. Easily recognized by their distinctive helmets and uniforms, judges cut impressive figures in Mega City 1, evoking fear, respect, and hatred in their more or less equal measure from the citizens they protect. Judges are also well equipped to carry out their duties, from the lawgiver pistols that can fire up to six different types of ammunition, to the lawmaster motorcycles which are armed with an array of weapons, and an onboard AI computer that can take over driving duties when the judge is otherwise occupied. Of all judges enforcing the law in Mega City 1, the most feared and respected is Judge Dredd. A dour, often humorless man, utterly committed to punishing lawbreakers and keeping the peace. Over the years, he has brought justice to some of the most notorious criminals to have terrorized his city. While he almost always gets his perp, Dredd is but one man. And with the constant unrest and upheaval making the city a dangerous place, there will always be a need for fresh recruits to join the fight. It is time for you and your friends to earn your badges. Take up your lawgivers and bring the law to the city. You might die as many have before you, but you might make a name for yourself. One worthy to stand alongside Judge Dredd. Now we begin our adventure today in Mega City 1, the sprawling metropolis that I've just described to you there. And we will begin in the judge block as Judge Kane is 
going to work today for a new assignment that all of you have been called for by your head judge of your unit, Judge Salem. He's got a reputation for being a bit of a hard ass. He likes to play by the book, which sometimes gets some of you into trouble, no doubt. And he keeps a close eye on his judges as best as he can. Now, he oversees several different departments. Now, let's start with Judge Kane. Remind us, Kane, briefly just what you look like as you are striding down the halls uh, towards your uh, new assignment. <clears throat> Uh, Judge Kane, uh, the heavy thump of his boots as he walks with a purpose everywhere. Um, and even in the wide halls, some people have to kind of move out of the way of his kind of just girth as he's just this slab of a man, but only like 5'2". Um, and so he constantly, uh, people are, are sometimes underestimating him because they, uh, they literally look down on him. Uh, but he, uh, he never looks up to anyone, save one man. Wow. As you enter into the conference room with Judge Salem, you see him there standing in his uniform as you are at attention, waiting for the rest of your kin to arrive. Um, he turns as you enter into the room and uh, sort of nods grimly at you. Ah. Uh, Judge Kane, right on time. Judge, Judge Salem, how are you? Uh, I am well, but I have troubling news for you before the other judges arrive here. I fear it will be most troubling for you. I can handle it. Hmm. We'll see. You recall, I'm sure, your former mentor, Judge Womack. And there's an uncharacteristic pause. <clears throat> yes. Of course. Mm. Well, the judge's time in the ISO cube is over as of today. I had actually forgotten. I tried to put that behind me, but that could be troubling. Hmm. I thought it best to bring you this news before the others arrived. Thank you. <clears throat> I do like being prepared. I will keep my eyes out. Hmm. Very well. I'll leave it to you to act as you see fit within the confines of the law. As always. And at this time, we shall see Judge Fair arriving, walking down the same halls. Judge Fair, what do you look like today? It's morning, you're getting ready for your duties. I enter the meeting room, uh, standing the briefing room, standing tall and proud, my luscious blonde hair flowing in my back under my uh, helmet. I seem to be in a proud mood. Uh -huh. As always, I'm so proud to represent the best and brightest of the judges. Judge I Salem nods at you as you come in. Mm. I know that uh, Judge Kane. So, what's on the menu today? I'm afraid that we'll have to wait for when the other judges are here. But while the two of you, I have you here, why don't you give me a quick report on the rest of your team? Judge Lawrence, Judge Fumont, and Judge Judy. Well, Lawrence is a more than capable medic. Um, <clears throat> a little slow on the trigger, but uh, she, uh, I think she appreciates patching up wounds as opposed to dishing them out. 
Fremont continues to learn, continues to grow. Um, powerful uh, <clears throat> side judge, but uh, they uh, still have a lot to learn. As for Judy, I um, have not seen her in a while. Not since that business uh, beyond the wall. Mm. Judge Fair, perhaps you can illuminate us. We've been patrolling together. She is not the most disciplined, but she's keen to prove herself and grow and go up the ranks of the organization. Yes. And she might be, though, a bit hasty in this. She doesn't have the patience I personally associate with senior judges, if I may say. Mm. Well, best to keep an eye on her then. Mm. I'll keep two. The, mm. At this point, we'll see Judge Fremont coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, Judge, what do you look like today? Um, she's it's the morning, so she's just kind of walking down the hall at the smooth gate just smiling at all the all that she passes by just make, make sure to make direct eye contact with each person that she passes and just gives a nod but today is late different she has just dark bags underneath her eyes as like as someone who hasn't slept well in the last few days Yeah, not just go around the room. We are just waiting for the rest of the judges to arrive. But tell me, Judge Fremont, I understand that you can have certain abilities. Tell me, have you ever used these abilities on a fellow judge? Oh, certainly not. It would be unbecoming of a judge, too encroach on their private matters of course but mm. sometimes just can't help it certain judges do not shield themselves off and just their thoughts are like a foghorn you can't ignore it speaking of that judge judy should be here shortly and at that moment judge judy you're here um, so Judy is, uh, she's walking down the corridor, she has her helmet under her arm, like her hair is, is all lovely and done, but she looks like she's had maybe a big night. Um, she has a coffee cup in the other. Um, just comes in, morning gentlemen, Fremont, nice to see you. And just goes in and like takes a seat at the closest like chair. Perhaps you would like some coffee, Judge Judy. It seems as though you are tired. Way ahead of you, big man. <sighs> also, this is a good point to mention that uh, the Wild Magic Surge that Judge Kane rolled means that his index finger is shaped like a key. Um... <laughs> 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 <clears throat> <clears throat> Boy. Trying to keep all the puns inside, sorry. Yep. <laughs> so as you guys are sitting down and get some coffee at the last uh, moment here, before it looks like Judge Salem's about to lose his temper, Judge Lawrence, you arrive. Uh, what state did you arrive in this morning? She comes in in uh, uniform, her helmet under the arm, walking at a rather brisk pace for such an elderly woman. <laughs> And she has, instead of red hair, now perfect white hair, long but pinned up just like she did uh, in her youth, I guess. Uh, she has a lot of crow's feet, but she has the kind of face that does not say elderly, friendly grandmother, but don't cross me. <laughs> I've seen a lot of things. <laughs> Scary grandma. Scary grandma. 
<laughs> awesome. Well, the group of you assembled, Judge Salem uh, takes a look around and says, mm, It would do well for all of you to remember to arrive on time, like Judge Kane and Judge Fair here. And he glares at the three of you, particularly at Judy. After about 10 seconds of solid staring, he says, Now, to the case I have for you. <laughs> there is a, another unit that I oversee of judges. I almost put them onto the case. <laughs> Judy, I think you're familiar with that unit. One of the judges there said that uh, you and he don't see eye to eye ever since basic training. Oh, it's deed then. <laughs> yes. I saw fit to put you on the case instead in order to prove yourselves to the law. Now, the task is, as I say, you are to provide extra security. A gunman has sent a threat. There is a show, the Robot of the Year show. This gunman has sent a threat to kill everyone there. And we need more security on the case, so... That is where you come in. You will arrive there, make sure the perimeter is secure, and execute justice if there truly is a gunman. Any questions? What's the confidence level of this threat? We get things like this all the time. Hmm. There is an old saying in the law, better safe than sorry, Judge Kane. It is a threats like this are frequent, yes, but nonetheless, they must be followed up on. If there are pubs active in the area, they must be caught. No doubt, the show will have its fair share of pubs lurking in the darkness. Even if there is no gunman, root them out. Yes. The only way we can keep this city in shape is by exercising the law. We will do so. Very good. Then, Judge Kane, I task you, fronting this case, you will be in charge of the units. Do not fail me. I will do my best, as I always do. Mm. And so will everyone, and he kind of pauses for a little second longer on Judy, and so will everyone else before continuing on. Very good. For free to arm yourselves of any extra equipment necessary and head down to the show as soon as you can. And with that, yes. he turns, heads out of the room. So, anybody know anything about this robot show? I've never been uh, a big fan of them myself. Can I dig out the layout of the venue? Absolutely, yes. Um, you find that it's uh, essentially a marketplace uh, in that it's very open. There are plenty of buildings um, around, sort of surrounding it, which would make for great uh, ambush spots. Um, there are a lot of angles to cover. And if there's going to be a large crowd there, there will probably be thousands of people at the show, sort of milling about. Um, <coughs> 
So it's certainly not an ideal place to try and uh, and protect uh, several entrances and exits. Um, by which means was that threat delivered? Can we figure out who's behind it, basically, by how they worded the threat? Maybe which gang might be behind it or something? Interestingly enough, you have not been given any information on the method of delivery that the threat was was made. Might mm -hmm. strike you as a little odd. Can we look it up in a file or something? Um, yeah, uh, you could certainly uh, try. Who's who's trying to look up the uh, the case file for this? Because you have like a case number, long series of letters. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, will you sure. look it up? Yeah, uh, when you go to look it up, it is restricted. Hmm. Interesting. So you're not on the right clearance level to mm -hmm. to be able to view it. Am I the only one who thinks that this is weird? No. Uh, seems highly uh, outside protocol. Yes. Well, there has to be a reason for it, though. We can discuss all of this via com uh, while we ride all our gavers to uh, the all our masters to the site. Uh, the judge uh, Salem was clear we needed to proceed to this place as soon as possible. Mm. You're right. Yep. All right, judges, let's get judging. And Kane gets up to walk out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, everyone's following Kane. Yes, Lawrence is putting on her helmet and making sure she, had, she has everything she needs. It's session zero, we got to work out all the uh, taglines. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. So you can hop on your lawmakers and head over to the. Mm -hmm. Uh, convention space uh, for the you see in big uh, yellow paint the robot of the year show um, in the heart of Mega City One. The main area is huge. As soon as you arrive, uh, you see that there are uh, there's a large crowd of people milling around. Uh, and in fact, while there's the large sort of uh, area in the center, it seems like there are several convention halls as well. People are going in and out of two different buildings uh, in order to uh, to see different different sites. Um, there looks like there are food vendors around um, and restaurants as well, um, but mostly there are stands showing off the latest in robot design, many of which have demonstrations and handouts on presentations for attendees to experience. Um, you spot as well the CyboComp stand, um, which is uh, showing one of its uh, domestic robots every two hours or so and, and executing uh, them as well. You see the robot brought forward, ordered into a raging ring of fire on the stand. And it takes about 20 minutes for each robot to melt, and uh, each one begs the sales representative not to order them to do it. Um, even more hauntingly, there are robots waiting to be s destroyed patiently in a line waiting for their turn. Each one you can see in their eyes looks clearly terrified, but they are unable to order, uh, to disobey orders and run. Uh, they all look to be completely identical as well, the CyberCom stand. And then inside in the sort of convention halls, it looks like there's food and restaurants where police, people are going to sit down. Um, all in all, you you know you count several thousand people here, and, and more are flooding in as the the day goes on as well. What do you guys want to do? And uh, just so I'm clear, Will, we were tasked like there's a threat made against this happening. No, no one in particular, right? Correct. Uh, okay. The the threat apparently was made that the government would kill everyone. At this event, which is certainly a, a, a big task and, and potentially one of the reasons why you guys were put on the case rather than I'm going to kill one person, I'm going to try and kill everyone, which seems impossible. But on the off chance that someone is going to be here, or they could have weapons that are, you know, um, that have some serious firepower to them. Mm hmm. 
Well, <clears throat> I don't have a lot of information. So that means uh, just look for anything out of the ordinary. Large vehicles that shouldn't be parked. Things of that nature. Things that could carry out mass destruction. I don't like Maybe it. Maybe should do one circle around to figure out if such a wagon is stationed somewhere or if something is on the, one of the bigger buildings around. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. I'm gonna so go. You guys want to spread out? <clears throat> Go ahead. Yep. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I will behave like uh, like a judge. Like I mean, uh, like I'm not here for a specific reason. So I'm gonna go from check the foot stands, make sure there's no breach of health regulations. Okay. Yeah. You uh, you head over to the food stand, and there's all sorts of. Uh, you know, like fast food being served up for, for folks here. Most of it's pretty, you know, dirty looking, but that's okay. It's still up in the regs. Uh, there's a, uh, a salesman there who sort of uh, looks up and says, Ah, uh, uh, would you like something to eat, uh, Judge? Uh, you must be hungry, protecting all the citizens of Mega City One. Are you suggesting that as a gift? What's the purchase price for this? Oh, oh, for, for you, uh, Judge Nothing, I can consider it a, a, a gift for all the hard work you do here in the city, protecting citizens like myself. You would know that uh, any attempt for bribery of a judge can no, oh, goodness. 10 years in either cube. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, um, it's... Uh, Forget I mentioned it. You don't look like you're hungry anyway. Yeah, good enough. You've been attending this event often? Uh, every year, yes. For the past five. I've heard some people might be disgruntled with the event this year. Would you have heard why it would be? Disgruntled? Uh, well, uh... I can't see why anyone would be disgruntled with such uh, an event. It's why it's fine. Uh, you see the latest robos, uh, robots from CyberComp. Uh, uh, I mean, I've never had any complaints against the food. <laughs> hmm. You're not concerned yourself that some robot might take your job as a food seller? Oh, no, I'm very hopeful about the... Uh, the industry when it when it comes to that, <laughs> I, I don't think it'll it'll cause a massive job to lay off in the next twenty five years or anything like that. No, no, um, and and the food I create is fantastic. Uh, again, not that I'm trying to bribe you with it. Um, but have you heard anything special about the event this year? Is there any? Grand announcement, which would well, uh, the, the new robots, the new robots from Cybercomp, uh, the, the new domestic robots. Um, that's something new, uh, as you can see. Oh, there goes another one. You look over and you see that there's another robot which is being melted slowly as it's begging its master not to. Um, <laughs> There's that. Um, you could go to a couple of the attractions. You go to the, the there's a tea party where domestic robots uh, servants serve you tea and cake. Uh, there's even a, a demolition challenge where uh, attendees can try and destroy a wall with a sledgehammer quicker than the demolition robot. Uh, there's a spot the difference stall. Uh, you can try and guess. Uh, which of the glamorous models is a human and which is robotic? Uh, and then there's a ro robotic police bloodhound, or a robo dog, uh, who uh, loves to demonstrate how talented it is, which might be of particular interest to you, Judge. Might be indeed. Maybe I'll go check it out. You should keep an eye on that extinguisher next to your fryer. I think the end date of use is nearing. Right. Yes. Good. Well, I'm happy to help, um, Judge. Uh, very, very happy to have help. Uh, I will proceed. Go check out those robot dogs. Hmm. We'll come back to you in a second. Then. Um, what will the rest of you guys 
doing. Uh, like, I, you, you'll be able to see all the stores I just mentioned there if you wanted to check out the Tea Party or the uh, the Bloodhound or the uh, Spot the Difference uh, or the Demolition Challenge as well. You can see a Demolition Robot is like just mauling down a wall while uh, competitors are uh, are trying to uh, beat it. Mm. Kane is going to go over to where they're like destroying the robots and the robots are like begging for their life and all that. He's going to go check that out. Yeah, I think I'll go with um, Kane. Okay. Um, what about Judy and Lawrence? Um, I feel like Judy is just walking amongst the people trying to be a very visible judge presence. Um just kind of make it known that judges are there and watching so she'll like anyone she thinks is even slightly suspicious she'll hold their like gaze a long time and keep walking you know yeah. just give that like I'm, I'm watching you sort of kind of deal mm -hmm. you hear the uh the sort of whispers uh, and you do as well lawrence uh, as you go with judge judy it's like, that's judge judy famous yeah i know um <laughs> and you know you spot a guy in the crowd who's like giving you a, a, a weird look and just like hold his eyes eye contact for a for a little bit uh he he's actually one of the um folks from uh, robocomp who's uh working on the uh the tea party he sort of walked over the teapot and he gave you a weird look um and he like quickly sort of buries his head and starts going back to to bringing more tea to the robots who are serving it to people hmm. um lawrence actually doesn't want to go into the crowd she's mm -hmm. as i said someone who doesn't really like to mingle um, instead, she is starting to circle around the perimeter and looking for a place where she has a good view. And she mm. is trying to get the lay of the land. She has uh, skill points in tactics and to look brilliant. So I'm going to use logic and tactics in order to figure out if I were the perp, how, what would I do t in order to basically um, be the biggest threat to this uh, convention? Um, where would be the most logical way of entry for, I don't know, a missile or this gunman to shoot from. Yeah. So she Hell yeah. Let's have the first roll of the game. Let's see how well it goes. <laughs> so uh, my logic oh, is 10. So I have four dice to roll on logic alone. And tactics is yep. one dice, so five dice. And that's actually the max on grade five. So nice. 5d6, right? 5d6. Okay. Um, how do I roll more than one? Uh, right. single so dice, one. space, uh, 5d6. Okay, just 5d6. Uh, yeah, full dice, dice, space, 5d6. Or you can, like, pick up a dice while you're left, while you're holding down left click, you can press right click, and it all rolls. Yeah. Pick up several dice. So forward slash space five d six. Uh, forward slash die space five d six. Oh, I see. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no worries. I've That's used fantasy crowns in ages. It's all good. I always forget which one is. Still doesn't work, right? Uh, I don't see it rolling. No. Four shot die space five d six should do. It. You can try and copy and paste. Uh, and put it in the. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. I put it in uh, the VMIC chat for you, and it's also in the fancy grounds. If you want to copy oh, and paste yeah. that. Perfect. Thank you. I actually oh, did type that. I could swear that I typed that. Looks like it worked this time. <laughs> Twenty. Uh, so you've got, you know, you take a, you take a good look around. The problem being, there's a lot of uh, good places for for perps mm. to hide around here. Um, you can't definitively say the 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 single spot that you expect an attack to come from. Uh, you know, the 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 open gate, uh, which sort of people are milling in and out from, would certainly be a good 
good vantage point for someone to come through and start tearing up the place if they they just wanted to start shooting up the place. But also, if you had a if you were like a sniper or something, um, and if you're up in one of the the windows of a convention hall, that could probably work as a, quite a good position as well. So you've got you identify those two places as potential avenues of uh, of attack. Hmm. Can I nar narrow it down to like the f four most likely points? Um, right might come from so basically we could station one of us on air on all of yep. those points yeah so you've um, got um you know uh, two levels in the convention hall that would both be good sort of the top level and the bottom level mm -hmm. and then uh, there are two gateways as well that like, in and out of the place that that would also be yeah. uh, good attack points uh, i'm going to activate the radio and my helmet then so i can contact all the judges wearing helmets <laughs> i guess <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to radio in that I analyzed I Judge Lawrence here. I analyzed the um, convention grounds. There are four likely points where our gunmen might be stationed in order to create the most havoc. And I'm giving them the coordinates and I say I'm going to go over to the gates and I'm I will inform Judge Judy myself. Hmm. Perhaps we can spread out and cover those four and have one rover mm -hmm. to kind of support from within. <clears throat> Copy that, Judge Kane. Okay. I think Judge Judy's already roving, so let her yeah. do that. <laughs> She's well, already on the seems to be her. So it does seem to be her lot in life. Hmm. You guys just talk mad shit about her on a radio while she's not listening to that. Yeah, if she would wear her, if she would wear her helmet. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I've fuck you, I'm famous. <laughs> <laughs> I've been urging the uh, top brass to move it into an actual pen penalty, but it is still just a uh, suggestion. Hmm. Um, who? Who did look at the robots um, that were being destroyed? Uh, that was uh, me and Fremont, I believe. Yeah, let's um, just jump over yeah. there. So, as you get the message on the uh, the comms, you see the demolition robot, which is just tearing through a wall uh, while this, uh, yeah, he looks strong. Uh, man is trying to uh, bust through the wall of a sledgehammer at the same time, and you hear the man from uh, Robocoms shouting, Ha ha! It seems as though no one can best. The demolition bot. Uh, do I see any other uh, would-be besters of the robot? Can any man here destroy what uh, what this creature has in the same amount of time? I think not, but perhaps. Ah, <laughs> two uh, judges. What, what a, what a uh, surprise! A welcome surprise. Uh, perhaps uh, one of you might like to try and best. Our uh, demolition bot here. What say you, judges? I'm sorry that we are on the clock right now. So we cannot participate in extracurricular activities. But I do appreciate asking. Um, Have you seen anything I'm... out of the ordinary? Well, if... I might say so, the two of you are. <laughs> I was not expecting, I did not realize we had extra security this year at uh, the Robot of the Year show. It's most welcome, but no, I can't say I have business as usual, as they say. Mm. And, mm. Uh, and and Dr uh, he kind of looks over at where uh, the robots are being, like, destroyed. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> And what is the purpose of that, if you don't mind me asking? This is my first well, uh, robot expo. Of course. Well, as you should uh, know at any Robocon, uh, we at Robocomp try to show off uh, exactly how much control and power mankind has over its robots. These are not creatures to be feared. They cannot turn against us. No. Look how they beg and plead for their lives and yet cannot disobey the orders of their masters while they are being burned before them. They can't even move away. They're, look, look at the fear in their eyes. Oh, they can't do anything about it. See, 
Judge, uh, this is why at RoboCop we're hoping the new Robo Dogs will be useful, perhaps to the judges as well, seeing as uh, they will be able to root out the uh, the corruption and heresy uh, all the while obeying your orders to the letter. Mm. Does RoboCop have any enemies? Any corporate challengers? Oh, my, uh, I'm afraid I'm a lowly, uh, con representative. Uh, I wouldn't know about any such thing. Uh, I, I don't think so, though. We are beloved by all for having bring, brought the gift of robots to mankind. Um, I'm gonna use my, um, empathy power, mm -hmm. I'm gonna use two points to... What's the general feeling of the room around, like, the destruction of these robots? Right. Yeah. Um, so, I think immediately as you come into the space, yeah, Fremont would know that people are like excited to see the robots blow up and like and, <laughs> and hit walls. Um, it's it's certainly exciting. There's also that sort of excitement slash a little bit of fear about the robots, seeing as they are so powerful. Um, but I think the f you get you're getting the sense as well that the crowd's fear is quickly being overcome by the salesman who's who's quite good at what he's doing, in uh, in showing them how how much you can control this beast. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, they're they're nervous about you being around. <laughs> that's always good. That's a plus. Yeah. Mm. The one thing that's making her happy today because this is a crowd of people. Thoughts get through. Hmm. And uh, Kane is going to kind of step away from this guy uh, and, you know, motion for, for Fremont to follow him. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Does we that bother you? It the what? robots. I'm, seem a little agitated well, about B. If we're looking for a perp who is disgruntled against this activity, as I look around, I only see one. The robots themselves. They have motive, motivation, is programming it, enough to keep them back. Hmm. Maybe. It's motivation, but I'm pretty sure it's all programming. Cause those, looks, those looks of fear are programs, because I don't hear any of it. Just machines. So mm. I feel that. So maybe we should start looking at... Um, those that are doing this. Can you sense anything in one of these uh, reps? I will focus. I'll use empathy on the, any reps that are within, like, my area. Just like any, um... Uh, let me just check what it is. It's, um, just surface emotions, strong emotions, any strong emotions coming from them. Yeah, uh, the rep you were just talking to has, uh, uh, a healthy amount of fear for having to, uh, spoken to the two of you on your arrival. Um, that's the strong emotion you'd get from him. And as as he knows that Fremont is, is kind of scanning him, I'm going to go back up. By the way, is um, get any uh, big layoffs at RoboCop lately? Maybe a big name, a designer, something like that? Uh, uh, I don't don't think so. Uh, again, I'm not really high enough up in the corporate structure to, to know about su such things. Uh, although I did hear a, a rumor, Judge, that there was someone called uh, Kenneth. Kenneth uh, had come up at some point, which did strike me as strange. Uh, though I can't say the nature of uh, exactly what happened with that employee. It seemed like disgruntled at the very least. Hmm. Is there anyone here at this um, festivity that is uh, in charge of logistics or, um, <clears throat> you know, things of that nature that maybe would have a, uh, a bit more information? If you go into the convention hall and take a right, there's an office in there of uh, Mr. Uh, Randolph, who's uh, somewhat in charge of the uh, location and events, I understand. Thank you for your assistance, citizen. And he he'll walk away. Any time, any time at all. Yes. Did you get anything? 
nothing, nothing uh, incriminating. Just healthy respect for the position, our position. I don't think he couldn't sense anything duplicitous about him. So there we go. Good. Perhaps we should go see this Randolph. Sounds great. Alrighty. Um, so at this point, uh, Judge Judy, you were at the tea party. Um, one of the guys are giving you a bit of a strange look and sort of buried his head. Uh, what are you doing? You, you, all the while, you're completely unaware about what the rest of the judges are doing uh, <laughs> because the crowd is massive. You can't see him. Uh, I mean, you're not wearing um, a helmet, but uh, yeah. Yeah, so Judy is going to get out her, her day stick and walk across to the tea party and to the guy that gave her the, uh, the very suspicious look. And she's just going to tap it on the nearest table or something near to this guy. <clears throat> um, <no. laughs> ah, ah, judge, judge, uh, judge, judge, Judy. Um, what, a, what a surprise. Um, this, these are our robots. They are serving tea. Um, t would you would you like some? Uh, no, thank you. Not much of a tea drinker. What are you? What are you? What is this for? Tea serving robots. What purpose is this? Well, um, uh, benevolent judge, uh, there are those uh, civilians, citizens who. Uh, do not have who lack the capabilities that, that you do um, and and they are also very lazy and uh, They want someone else to do all the things for them that they don't want to do like cleaning and cooking and uh, tidying up and, uh, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. hoovering and uh, You know and, and tidying the rugs so, yeah, All this tea parties mm -hmm. um, All this sort of things and then they're willing to, uh, to, to pay for it. What kind of orders can you give these things? Is it just domestic things, or could you have them do things that would perhaps be illegal? Oh, absolutely not. No, they are programmed within the confines of their, uh, their structure. So uh, a domestic robot can only perform domestic tasks, whereas a demolitions robot uh, can only perform uh, demolition tasks. Because you can see, taking down the, the, the buildings, uh, etc. Um, similarly, a robo dog could not uh, serve tea. <laughs> they don't have hands. A little robo paws. <laughs> can't do it. Judy uh, is not laughing. <laughs> she is such a really straight face. <laughs> Trust me, I tried, uh, but but uh, no, uh, they, they they are not capable of um, the, uh, the the artistry. I'm sure of, of which you are able to perform. Um. <clears throat> and how confident are you that that couldn't be altered? Oh, uh, extremely, extremely, um, overly confident. I would say, in fact, yes. <laughs> Judy gives him a look where she's kind of like glares down at him, like sizing him up, like. What the... <laughs> so, if for example, <laughs> if for example these robots found their hands in, uh, found their way into the hands of some perps, then these perps surely shouldn't be able to crack these codes and have these things. Perform. Right, I... There are, there's no possible way these uh, that, that, that perps will be able to crack the complex infrastructure with which these robots are created. The dizzying, dizzying array of, uh, of, of numbers and sometimes letters which goes into creating these robots uh, are almost impossible to crack by only our top scientists at Robocop. At this point she pulls out a little notebook and your name is? Oh, Matthew. Uh, wh why? <clears throat> Just sign here, Matthew. What? And she's um, written up this states, like, this guy has sworn that these robots cannot possibly be used for any sort of illegal activities. She's written that up. Sign your name here, Matthew. Uh, well, um, I'm not exactly a representative of Robo... Uh, co 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 Are you, then, perhaps lying to an officer? 
No. No, no. <laughs> no, no. Are you aware of the penalty for lying to a judge, Matthew? Uh, uh, intimately. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Um, for, I'll sign it. I'll, I'll, I'll sign it. That's, that's right There's here. a good lad. <laughs> you have a pen? Oh, that's my name. <laughs> All right. Keep up the good work. Got my eye on you. <laughs> She'll just turn on her heel and walk away. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> okay. Oh, that's fun. So, <laughs> <laughs> so while... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> well, Judy is that's no good there. Yeah, Judge Ben been checking out the food. Uh, Fremont and Kane are heading over to um, speak with Randolph and Judge Lawrence. Meanwhile, it's been uh, making sure everyone's checking in at one of the different areas, scoping out the place. Judge Kane and Judge Fremont, you head over to uh, where this man Randolph is in his offices. Obviously, you're immediately let through due to your uh, badges of authority. You see an aging human um, who is wearing a suit and tie, looks somewhat bedraggled. Uh, he has a like one of those convention sort of like uh, badges and lanyard on uh, to show that he's sort of in charge, got security clearance. Um, and he says, "Oh, you must be the judges. Yes, come in, come in. Uh, I did call in for extra security. I'm so glad that the judges." Uh, listened and brought such fine members of their group to us. I'm going to be of help. Well, first off, thank you for your vigilance, citizen. Um, now, what, if I might ask, it's a rather basic question, why did you feel extra security was needed? Well, I would like uh, to hear from yourself. Of course. Well, we received the... Uh, message that there would be some kind of attack and of course any messages such as that automatically have to go through the judge uh, department and uh, well, we don't My have uh, that much I'm afraid not uh, uh, judge that is I understand uh, clearance level above your own which I'm uh, not allowed to divulge interesting well, you see, we don't have a lot of security at the uh, year, uh, Robot of the Year show. It's generally a piece for the fair. Uh, everyone sees the robots and moves on. I mean, I have a few house security guards to make sure that things don't get too rowdy. And uh, Robocom sees that they have their own security on hand for their own robots. So, well, it's only natural that we ought to make sure such threats are, uh, are checked on uh, with fine people such as yourselves. Of course. Hmm. I've heard of um, a possible disgruntled employee. He might be the one perpetrating this. Uh, one Kenneth. What can you tell me about this person? <laughs> um, I don't know how that name came to your uh, attention. I, uh, I can trust you. It's, uh, it's an internal affair within Robocomp. Uh, it is, uh, should not be of any concern. Interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, Fremont just gives um, Kane a look of. Um, it's like a look of like, can I? You you see like the the slightest inclination of his head. Just. All right, I am going to mind read him while he's um, while Kane is talking to him. See if if, if I can glean anything from him. Let's see if I can cool. bring up the <clears throat> yeah, ten yeah. side points. There we Ooh. go. So yeah, just I'm just reading any any th uh, uppermost thoughts while he's getting cool. integrated by our. So uh, you make a side yeah you make side roll versus his mental defense. Uh, okay. That is. Okay, that's telepathy plus psi, right? Yes. Okay, so that is how many? Telepathy is 
three, so it's two d six plus three, so five d six. All right. Nice. Man. Hey. So, you peer into uh, the mind of uh, Randolph, and um, see exactly what you gain. Yeah, you you mentioned yeah, you get to read his mind. So first of all, he's lying to you about the uh, the Kenneth name not being important, uh, and secondly, you learn that Kenneth isn't a person. He's actually thinking of a robot. And the robot is called Call Me Kenneth, and it has a whole lot of guns on it. And at that time as well, as you're reading Randolph's thoughts as he is perspiring, outside, Judge Lawrence sees as a lone gunman steps out through one of the gates with a heavy machine gun and begins to open fire on Mega City 1. And with that is where we'll end tonight's episode of Judge Dredd. Assault on Justice! Ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh my god, no! Uh, <laughs> We're so fantastic. How dare they? <laughs> I, those <laughs> bastards. Um, it's an inside job! Uh, man, the, uh, it's, this is going to be fun. This is going to be a lot of fun next week when we uh, dive back into this adventure and, uh, and start on things properly. We'll get a full three-hour session to... Uh, blast away perps. We've already had uh, some fun little interrogations, so I'm really looking forward to seeing you guys working as a as a team and just how destructive you guys are going to be to the, uh, the the citizens of Mega City One. Oh boy! Well, while this session is finished, we are of course going to be back next week for our proper, proper first session uh, of Assault on Justice. And we hope to see you guys there as well. That will be at the same time at 5 p.m. Eastern every Friday. If you want to catch a show live, it's also going to be available later on the podcast as well. So stay tuned. Uh, for when you can listen to us back on the iTunes. Uh, we've got a new show coming up, or the next show coming up, rather, is Zweihander Black Hearts, in which the uh, party have just killed a couple of witch hunters and uh, now we're going to have to just deal with the consequences of that. So uh, stay tuned for that one. But let's go around the cast and the crew. Did we enjoy ourselves tonight? Did, are we enjoying the uh, the worlds of 2000 AD? Where can we find you guys online? Perutz, how is that tonight for you and, uh, and Judge Kane? Well, anytime I can implement the law, uh, I am happy. Uh, Kane is happy. Here we are. We're in the middle of it. Uh, I can't wait to see what happens. Uh, I sincerely hope I will be back next week, but we will literally be in the middle of a web DM shoot. It's really weird how somehow on Encounter Roleplay, we start a game right when we're doing a shoot, so I have to do a game from the shoot site. So now it's actually become kind of a tradition. So, uh, <laughs> so hopefully I will be back next week. Uh, but I am Pruitt, one half of WebDM. You can check our videos out every Wednesday on YouTube where we do D&D, tabletop role-playing game advice videos, things of that sort. We also have games on uh, Twitch, uh, on our WebDM Twitch channel, uh, Tuesday, uh, Thursday, and Sunday? Is Lost Girl still going? One more, and then that's One more, it. yeah. Yep, so one more week with Lost Girls. Uh, but also, uh, you know... You can find me on Encounter Roleplay on Wednesdays for some uh, Call of Cthulhu, and then right back here on Fridays, where we all get to be the law. Can't wait. Let's get to, let's get to judging. Uh, fantastic. Uh, <laughs> Callum, how was that tonight for you? And Judge Fair. Uh, that was awesome. I cannot wait to uh, to continue. Sadly, I will be missing the next session. I was supposed to start a bit earlier as a result. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm going to be away. Uh, I am Kaloum from the Rollist podcast. Uh, you can check our last episode, which is an interview with uh, Virginia from our Acton Tulu uh, table. And uh, a few, uh, you've probably seen her in many other Encounter Roleplay stuff. Uh, it's quite a cool interview, and uh, yeah, I cannot wait. I'm I'm very sorry to missing about missing the next session, and I'm very excited. Uh, I got a confession to make. And my character was not ready. I thought we would pull the skills together here tonight. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, I kind of I was looking through the profession. To do it, yeah, that was awesome. Great team, uh, very exciting hooks. I need to listen to the podcast or watch the video to make a list of all of them. Yeah, 
Yeah, definitely. Can't wait to get to flesh out some of those NPCs and to get to some of the crimes that you guys may or may not have committed uh, or thought about committed. Uh, <laughs> speaking of which, Susie, how's that tonight for you and Judge Judy? Um, so first of all, I would just like to make a formal apology to everyone at 2000 AD. Hey, Maltra, if you watch this, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, judge Judy is like the worst judge, like, ever, right? <laughs> Damn. Um, but yeah, it was a ton of fun. I can't wait to see what shenanigans we get up to and what damage we cause in Mega C1 and beyond, possibly. Um, yeah, I'm Susie, otherwise known as Susanna Grace, a variety streamer who does video games, art streams, and tabletop RPGs. You can find me Monday, Wednesday, nope, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday on my channel. Um, and you can find me on Thursdays on RPG Webby for a Song of Ice and Fire campaign. Fridays, find me here. Um, Sundays you'll be able to find me on Tales from the Grim and Sky Chasers, but this Sunday make sure to tune into WebDM at 8pm BST, which is 3pm Eastern, I think, for a special Q&A for the Law Skills, and we have a special announcement that I've been sitting on for weeks, and I really want to tell everybody, I've got to hold on to it for a little bit longer, but tune in on Sunday for it. Dope. And Shauna, how was that tonight for you and uh, and Judge Fremont? God, I had so much fun. I am, um, I can't wait to see what kind of like carnage this group gets up to. Honestly, <laughs> and got to give me a little bit of like recent thought police for like a little bit. But yeah, catch me on uh, Flying Cirrus on Twitter. Um, I have a pin tweet for all my games that I run through the through the week, which is six days a week now. <laughs> um, as well as I'm posting art. Um, yeah, so it's it's a bunch. It's all like a bunch of like wild mood swing, wild uh, show swings. Because one days I play like you know, uh, in just the most precious witch girl, and then now it's like this scary thought police lady. So I'm excited. Yeah, I want the uh, like three months like theme tune to be like karma police. That would be fucking dope. <laughs> when she comes in. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh my god, Judge Lawrence, how's uh, that for you tonight? Yeah, uh, I enjoyed it so much. Uh, I'm so pleased to be standing right next to the entry point of that gunman, <laughs> because I'm already long over it, <laughs> so I can't wait for next session. I've also been playing so much, d and as a flight, and they're always happy-go-lucky and very cheerful, or innocent characters, and I'm so happy to play someone grumpy <laughs> for a change. This is the game to do that, right? <laughs> so, yeah, um, you can find me on Twitter at uh, Tahina underscore Andale. When I'm not rolling dice here, you can see me over at Gold Heart Gaming. They've been hosting the show. This Monday, I'm playing Ella, my halfling rogue cleric in um, Curse of Strat. We are going up to Castle Ravenloft, looks like. So that's going to be interesting. Nice. Good luck with that. Thank oh, you. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys have been fantastic. Uh, join me, please. A round of applause for my players tonight, everybody in the audience. Uh, we'll be back next week, like I say, for more of the assault on justice. It's not quite clear to me if these guys are going to be the ones assaulting justice or if it'll be the perps. Maybe a little bit of column A, column B uh, situation going on here. Can't wait for it, though. Uh, but we're going to head into our next game, which is White Hand of Black Arts from our sponsors over at Grand Perilous Studios. Until next time, my friends, try not to roll too many that ones because we want to be the laughing what you do. Good night, everybody.